What's good, everybody? Welcome Yo. to Kyle and Corn. We both got the glasses, as you were just saying. I'm trying to make people think I'm sophisticated, man. I'm like, <laughs> since we came back on air, I've had this like scrubby beard. My hair's been in shambles, so like, it's not even like we took a hiatus and then came back and like, I was just looking fresh, fresh, and people were like, "Damn, he must have <laughs> just been freaking it this last two years." <laughs> they were like, "No, nah, this motherfucker's struggling hard body." So. For everyone out there, I'm getting a cut tomorrow. I'm shaving the beard. You, you know what happens to my beard when I was thinking about? What's up? So I went to like the zoo a while ago with my girls. And if you hear <laughs> Molly screaming. I love that like, start of the story. <laughs> well, I needed something to do. And if you have kids, it, like there's nothing ever to do. You can't really bring them to like an arcade. So a zoo is kind of a zoo in a pandemic is kind of the most ideal spot because it's outside. There's mad space. And, you know, you could just walk around and see animals and your kids are like in like heaven. So my beard reminded me of like when we went and saw, I think it was either like goats or sheeps or some shit. And it might have been a goat. And they have like the water trays like right all up in the like front. So like they can do that shit like in your face. Mm -hmm. And they like slob all in it. They're like. Yeah, they got like these like little little, like mm -hmm. and they get all wet. And like nasty, but like they just rub, like they just like rub that shit off, like it's nothing. It just occurred to me that might be why they call a goatee a goatee, right? Like goat. Oh shit, we might have just like, yo, I know, yo, <laughs> glass, we're, we're geniuses. Something, something different today. <laughs> that's some next level shit. If that's really like, <laughs> yo, yeah, that, that might of, be it, man. But no, I think the beard looks good on you, but. You, I, I think the best look for you would be if you take the one attachment and just get like a tight beard that's still because you have the nice beard hair where like you can't see your skin. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I got that patchy one where like you can still see my skin almost no matter how long it gets except in certain areas. Yeah. But for you, yours is good and full. So if you just get a one and do a beard with a one attachment, it would look fresh. It'd look like a tight beard. It looks better on camera, but I've said this before in person. If you see me, you're like, that shit looks a little like you, you look like on some like dirtiness. And, and I can just one? even with the one. Oh, no, with the one, it looks a little better. But right now, yeah. like it, I'm looking at it in camera and I'm like, it's kind of not that bad. But in person, yeah, in person, you're saying, yeah, no, me, I, you could I tell me it looks grimy. But anyway, so the goat, like their their shit is super wet and like just dragging. When that happens to me with my beard, it's it's kind of. Always. And it's not even at like an OD level now. It's kind of there for me. But when I eat or drink, something will get in there instantaneously. And if it's wow. water, I will feel it like heavily. So I'm, I'm giving the goat mad props because they they OD on that water and then just walk away like, <laughs> yeah, that's just not even bothering me. That's hilarious that you get it stuck in your beard, man. That's crazy. There's that something always. But I'm curious if... The same way to human being, like, why is it that humans are the only ones that are either like secure about some shit being in their beard or insecure about their shit being in their beard that like another human being could be like, oh, you got something on your face. Whereas a goat, is there anything equivalent to you think to goats where if that motherfucker's got mad water in his beard, another goat is like, you go, you know, like there's nah, some shit they're there. idiots, man. I mean, they're like, they're smart idiots because I know like dogs. Crystal has a dog that's uh -huh. like dumb, but also smart in a way. Like she could sense patterns. She knows when, when we're trying to get her to go yeah. to the vet or she, she knows when we're trying to get her to go into the garage, she's got to stay there for a couple hours. So she's hesitant. Like yep. they're smart, but they're dumb. And it's the same. I mean, they're just, they're not the crazy thing about goats to pivot for a sec is that they got square eyeballs. Do they square ass eyeballs, dog or rectangles? It is crazy. I know they got crazy eyes. I didn't know they were like square or rectangle. I remember I saw one somewhat recently. I forget where I was. I know that that sounds so stupid because it's like, how do you not remember where you saw a fucking goat? <laughs> but I was somewhere where there was a goat. I don't know where. <laughs> and I saw this a zoo or some shit. There's no other place nah, you'd see a goat. It wasn't a zoo. It wasn't a zoo. Yeah, if you saw you a goat was? other than a zoo, you'd have to remember that shit. It was last fall going to apple picking. They had like a little thing with goats and they were they were square ass eyeballs and I was like, how the fuck are the lines so sharp on those shits? It's just it's Damn. just a, it's I know it's crazy. I was like, that's how does that happen? That's crazy. Anyway, before we before we keep babbling about beards and goats and shit, um, we got to We got to jump into the big topic, man. 
Michael Jackson died. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson's dead, man. <laughs> Yo, I got a lot of takes on this, man. Like, a lot, a lot of takes. Hit and me, man. Hit me. So, my, my, my boy, Josh Little Bronx, he calls me conspiracy theorist. And Molly sometimes will say I'm bugging just with my takes. But every time I usually say some shit, it tends to either come true or like maybe years later or months later, motherfuckers will be like, they'll be preaching the same thing that I just talked about. So here's where I'm at. And for everyone doesn't know, I'm we're talking about the Will Smith, Bob, yeah, Bob Chris Rock shit. Right. Mm-hmm. I'll get to my whole theory on like, I, I, if, all right. So if this situation is as it is, as it seems right now, it seems like it's real. It seems like Will was really upset. After he, all right, let me take it. There's so much to like unpack here. Do it, man. We got all the time in the world. Hit me. So it's Chris Rock. It's like Chris Rock, like the kind of epitome of like comedian, top, 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 telling jokes at the Oscar, which like is a a thing that people do. It's like, it's like some celebrity singing the national anthem at a Super Bowl. Like it's just something that happens. Says the first joke about a guy and his wife. And, and, you know, it's fine. Then he goes to Will and Jada and says a joke about Jada that, you know, later comes out as, you know, about her bald head and alopecia and shit, which kind of ticked me off is Will laughs at it first. That's true. Now, let me just explain to everybody. The joke yeah. was about G.I. Jane, G.I. Jane, bald headed woman, yeah. badass soldier. Like, yeah. oh, you're going to be in G.I. Jane, too. Commented on the bald head. Yeah. I don't even know if he knew that she had alopecia. Anyway, keep going. Yeah, I thought it was because she was wearing like a green ass outfit first. Oh, so I was like, interesting, so interesting. That like you maybe that. he that was where my mind went first. I was like, oh, OK, she's wearing the whole green shit. She looks like a like a G.I. Joe stick figure type of thing. So I'm I'm like watching this live and he gets up there and slaps him on stage. So I, my first reaction, which is funny because I tweeted who like I wasn't watching the Oscars and kind of fucked the Oscars for everything that it is. Not even thinking about it because that show's just been like going down the drain, down the drain, garbage, uh, like performance show, whatever. Will walks on stage and like straight smacks him. Like, so I'm like, this this has to be fake. And along with everyone else in the audience, they've got to be thinking that this is some stage shit by like. To that point, I think you have a good point because mm-hmm. everybody was laughing. Everybody seemed to think that it was a bit. To yep. that point, to that yep. point. Anyway, continue. So then, so th- my mind's like, all right, let me go to Twitter because this is kind of like some shit. This is like, oh, you know, <laughs> Twitter, <laughs> like, like 100% of Twitter was about this at the time. Like, it, like absurd. It, set, it was like a nuclear bomb for Twitter. So I'm like, this is clearly staged. So even with like the delaying and stuff, I, I thought when... Yeah, so Australian TV had the full shit. Japanese TV had the full shit. There was the yep. delay in the U.S., and I guess they edited out some shit, but anyway, yeah. Yep. So then the delayed one, they go back to Will as soon as he's mouthing, clear as day. So, like, I've seen basketball mouthing stuff. I've seen mouthing from other things where you can't really, like, read what their lips are saying because it's just, like, it's 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 hard to read people's lips. And there's game shows of people, like, trying to read lips with headphones on and they say funny things so they delay everything which to me is like all right so something's happening then they delayed it to go back to will where you can clear he's clearly see his mouth saying don't fucking talk about my what like his mouth is as clear as day so i'm like why would they delay it just to go back to his mouth where you can clearly see him cursing so if you have the tape delay you chose the moment to go back to him clearly saying, don't talk about my fucking wife to put on TV, which made me think that this was something staged by the Oscars. So is that is that still what you think or no? No. Have you been changed? OK, so so I tweeted out, you know, the whole like I thought this was staged, blah, blah, blah. And then cancel culture try to come after me quickly. <laughs> like, like everyone's so quick to like if you say one thing without knowing everything because all of everything's not out. Like, that's why I'm a little on the side of, like, let's be easy on the cancel culture shit because, like, you're allowed to put in a thought or opinion out there on something when everything is not fully (laughs) developed yet. You know, like, like, I hear you. I mean, I've I've talked about this a lot. 
Uh, I mean, I'll get to my position. I already did segments on this. People know what I think about it, but I'll talk more about it here. But yeah, no, I mean, it's not dogpiling is not helpful. You know, yeah, it's, never, it's never helpful. Anyway, go ahead. Keep going. So so um, so where was I? So you were talking about and, and the tape delay thing. Let me comment on that for a second, because yeah. I think what happened and the reason why they cut back when Will was saying that part in the yeah. U.S. is because the tape delay is not that long. It's only like a minute or two minutes or something like that. So I think they like, have control over how long they can like put that because even during his speech, they put the Oscar shit on there for like kind of an OD amount of time. But I think that so when you do, and I know this because of streaming, like when you stream, when you live stream, mm -hmm. you could choose have it fully live. You could have like a delay and you could choose the amount of time that you want to delay it. Mm -hmm. If they only had a one minute or two minute delay, that exchange was longer than one minute or two minutes. So they had to cut back at a certain point. And it's like the furthest they could get ahead in the feud was when he was mouthing that shit. That's a good that's a good yeah. that's a good argument if that's the case too. I, I was under the impression that like they had like a panic button where they can control how long they kind yeah, of like well, maybe they could just run the commercials longer or some shit. That's probably what you were thinking. Yeah. Right. Or um so then so here's where I'm at. So I tweeted out the like I, I think this is fake. The Oscars looking for ratings, blah, blah, blah. Um then I one, I was following Tim Dillon's tweets the whole night, and he's a he is he's so hilarious. hilarious. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, I love Tim Dillon. So yeah, I saw him tweet like Will Smith then wins an award and talks about, um, you know, climate change for half an hour. So I was like, <laughs> let me fast forward a little bit because I had a little bit of tape delay. Mm. And then I saw that Will won the um, award shit. That was so crazy. Was like, let, me, let me watch his speech. Thinking it's going to be about climate change. But I know Tim Dillon is just yeah, like just fucking around. He goes into his whole thing. He's crying and like talking about this and that. Then I'm like, oh, shit. Maybe this is kind of real. And then I tweet back out, blah, 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 in favor on Will's side. And then everybody's coming at me like, no, Chris, Walk was, Chris Rock was assaulted. I'm like, oh, fuck, let me go back to the other side real quick. So, like, <laughs> I couldn't win last night going back and forth. And I kind of got in a big hole of just, like, picking sides. <laughs> but there's, like, there was a motherfucker out there for every tweet to be on either side of it. So, so I went, when I watched his speech, then I was like, yeah, I'm kind of on Will's side a little bit because, like, he's emotional and he's talking about his wife and this and that. But then somebody hit me with the, like, yeah, you can't slap somebody in the face, though, which then brought me back to the Chris Rock side. But then there were so many other things that came into play. Like, before the Will um, speech, I tweeted out one video that was a slow motion of Will walking up there. And you see Chris Rock's leg. And and I said this on Twitter. I'm not like a body, a right leg body expert analysis. But his right leg, before he gets slapped, kind of moves forward and like clenches a little bit. Like he's getting ready to take a slap. I mean, but he could have been expecting it because if somebody's charging up to you after you just made fun of their wife, like that's the maybe the first thing you'd expect is like, what's about to happen? Like you just brace because you're like, why are you charging near me? You know what I'm saying? I guess so. That's a good, that's a great counter argument. And I, I want to hear that because I don't want Chris Rock to be in on this shit. So then there was so many other shit after the, so then I come to the conclusion that Will Smith is in the wrong because regardless of what he says about your wife, you handle that situation way differently. You don't fucking walk on stage at the Oscars, pull some crazy Kanye West shit and slap somebody in the face. Just OD. I don't care if you're protecting your wife or people saying stuff about this and that. You don't do that. I don't care. You you looked psychotic because you were laughing and then you had some bipolar moment where you saw your wife got pissed and then you wanted to charge the stage. So here's where I'm at now. I still think like 11 to 13 percent of me thinks chris rock has like some comedy special coming out or will and chris are doing some movie in a couple months on like alopecia or like you know assault or some shit <laughs> that they, they might be promoting because it just seems like it just the whole world is talking about this shit like it's not even oh the like, rating shot through the roof as shot through bit. the roof mm -hmm. they got like like black people back in on it they got every market <laughs> checked off through this so like uh, uh again 11 to 13 percent of me still feel like you haven't 
I haven't really been back on Twitter. Just I've seen just people tweeting. But I don't know if there's been an official statement from like Chris Rock or like, you know, if Wills had an official statement. I know the Oscars came out and said they don't condone some shit. But like there's a there's a conspiracy core in me that's saying there's still something funky about this because here's what I'll add. After Amy Schumer comes out and she says something like, oh, what I miss, blah, 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 like joking about it. And then she does the same shit to the to a different actor. So she's talking about seat fillers. And she goes to the front row, and there's this one actor who's in all, like, the scary movies. And she's like, oh, hey, yeah, here's an example of a seat filler. Um, you can get up, and I'm going to just sit in your seat. And he goes, that, that's my wife. So, like, he got tight, too, but nobody's getting mad about that. And then the final straw that kind of is like, I'm still a little conspiracy to this is at the end of the show, the end, end, end of the show, they, for the credits, they had the orchestra play Let It Go. Let It Go didn't come out this year. So why are you playing Let It Go at the end of this year's Oscars? Like, you know. So you're trying to say that down. Let It Go is like, what, telling the audience to get over the hit? Or no, what? Let It Go, like, to Will, I think. Like, like, a, like yeah, like, a Let It Go to everyone. Like, just Let It Go is like a just let that whole situation go type of thing. All right. So let me walk you through, yeah. like, my, my experience with it. So okay. I woke up. I go on Twitter. The first shit I see, it's it's huge. Everybody's yeah. talking about it. And I was lucky enough to find very, like, I found very quickly, like, the first shit I saw about it was uh, the video from the Australian version of the Oscars where they had the whole shit uncut. Yep. And so I watched the video. You know, I hear the Chris Rock joke. Uh, Jada, you're going to be in um, whatever. G.I. Jane 2. G.I. Yeah. Jane 2. And... I see, you know, people are laughing. Will is laughing very clearly. And at first, in retrospect, I look back at it like, wait, did he do the old like, ha, ha, ha? Like, ha, ha, no. Yeah, But yeah. he didn't do that. He was genuinely laughing. Yep. So I see that. And then they cut to him. You know, he's walking on stage and he hits him and then he walks back. Now, all the way up until he gets back in his chair and... Chris Rock seems like actually shocked. He seems genuinely surprised by it. I thought it was fake until he started saying the, um, don't talk keep, about my fucking wife. He said, keep, yeah. keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. And then uh, Chris Rock's like, really dude? Like it was a GI Jane joke. And then he repeats it really like loud and almost like his voice cracking. You could tell he's on the verge of crying, if not already crying. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, and then the other thing that sold me that it's real that part flipped me pretty much immediately. But then at the end, the way Chris Rock is like, he's genuinely baffled and he like stumbled his way through the rest of it. He messed up the line and said something like, now we're going to be looking at documentaries. I mean, we're going to give out the award for the best documentary. Like he just couldn't get through it. And he looked like he was shocked. He was like, Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Yeah. He handled it well, but you could tell he was like really shaken up by it. Yeah. And so, but I, in my commentary on it, my first commentary on it, what I said was, um, 80, I'm 80, 20. Oh, so, oh, so you got a little 20 in you too. I mean, yeah, uh, it, look, 80% is strong. So I'm like overwhelmingly on the side of like, it was real, but, um, anything's possible, man. Like it, it, it's one of those things where it did increase the views massively. It did make it trend. Uh, Jerry Lawler, who did this once with Andy Kaufman back in the day, the same kind of bit on some late night TV show tweeted, like we did this bit in the seventies or whatever the fuck. And, um, yeah, like, I think it was real, but I don't, I, I don't, I wouldn't be part of that dogpiling brigade. We're just like coming after you for that shit. But the part where I would disagree with you was that when you were like, well, I'm sort of on Will's side on that shit. And let me just say, you got a lot of company when you had that position. I, I know you said you don't believe that anymore. Mm -hmm. but there, you got a lot of company in that position because when I started reading everybody's takes on it, dog, there was a Twitter poll from somebody I follow. Mm -hmm. He polled that shit 50-50 on the dot on Twitter. Now, since then, another poll came out, though, like an official poll. Like they actually like polled, like YouGov polled the American public or whatever. Yeah. And it's not 50 video. It was like 61% to 23% or something like that. That's so more in like favor... It. Of like, you know, don't fucking hit somebody over a joke. But on Twitter, that shit was 50-50. And so yeah. I was like, God damn. And so, you know, the 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 takes, I love the the part of the your take that I love the most is when you were describing, like, 
I, I thought it was fake. And then I was like, nah, Will's kind of right and it's real. <laughs> and then I went to, nah, I'm with Chris Rock on it because that's like, so that's classic. Cause then like you gave people every reason to come after you. <laughs> and, like I had people on, it was wild because like I put the whole shit out of just how I was thinking as like, as new developments were coming out. And like, yeah. is there anything wrong with sharing your thoughts and opinions of like, yeah, as look, something's playing out in real time? My, I, I will always have the biggest soft spot in the world for authenticity. I'd rather yeah. have somebody who's like authentically dead wrong about some shit than somebody who's fakely right about some shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. I, I'm never, I don't want to partake in any sort of dogpiling. I just don't think it's productive. But uh, so let me ask you though, when you had, the, when you thought it was real, the first time you thought it was real, and you were like, I sort of see where Will's coming from. What was your argument on that from? What made you think, think like, you know what? Like, it, it's fine. Like, he did what he did, and it's fine. I think what played into what Will doing was fine was that I thought it was staged. Oh, like, oh so you never thought that when, it, when it, it was obvious it was real, you never thought that he was right to do it? Yeah. As soon as you realized it was real, you thought, oh, that's fucked up then. Yes, yeah. Okay. I, I like, I was cool with say, this. There are people who say it's real, and he still. It, I'm fine that he did that shit. No, see, I'm, I, 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 and that's where I'm like, I was fine if he smacked Chris Rock, and it was, you know, a bit, a, a yeah, a real smack. Yeah, because then Chris would be in on that shit. A hundred percent. Yeah, but yeah. like mm -hmm. when you smack somebody in the, in the face, you just you you cross a line, and like I I I don't know. I've been brought up to like never put my hands on anyone. Yeah. And. Mm -hmm. Other people are like just more physical or violent or whatever the case may be. Or I think there's a way to be protective of someone without being physical, you know, and especially when you go on and have a speech right after that about love and bringing people yeah. together and all this rah-rah shit. He was talking shit. about God. He's like, God gave me a mission. He, like God and all this shit. Like I've seen some, the most powerful shit I've seen is through words. So like, if you really have a problem with Chris Rock, then go with your wife after the bit and and sit down with him and talk about that shit. It's cowardly to walk up there and smack somebody and then have like this little smirk on your face as you're walking back. Like to me, and I'm Jada there, I'd get more mad that he did that shit. Like who the fuck are you? Well, it definitely blew to it do up that on my behalf. Like nobody, fewer people would have known about her alopecia if he didn't smack Chris Rock. Now more people know about her alopecia. So if yeah. you were trying to hide it and you thought it was a sensitive topic, well, congratulations. Now billions of people know about and that. Now shit. you take away the all the shit you were talking about, Richard Williams and Serena and Venus. All that shit got overshadowed by what you did. So like all this family shit, no one's talking about the movie. No one's talking about their family. No one's mm. talking about the the kids that you mentioned in your speech they're talking about you and it's kind of like it's kind of getting me a little irked right now because like molly would probably beat the shit over someone over i could do it but like the fact that like you think you're in this like i don't know i kind of just been like trying to understand and like in in our household here specifically like molly does a lot of the finances and just does a lot of the shit that like typically a man would do to me will having this impression of like, I got to protect my wife like this and that, like no one, she could stand up for herself. So like, if she has an issue, she should say some shit too. Yeah. The, the thing I think that made him snap, well, he was laughing at the joke and then he peeked over at her and she looked like she was upset by it. And that's when he stormed the stage and hit him. So yeah, she, like, I'm no, it, I'm not defending. I'm not defending that. I'm just saying that it seemed like something about the way she was looking, like rolling her eyes and look genuinely upset made him be like, now I got to step up and do this. So I wonder what the dynamics are in the relationship, which made him feel like, well, now I definitely have to get up and go punch him, even though I was laughing two seconds ago. Yeah, you know I think saying? there's a, a lot more deeper stuff in that relationship, clearly, because she's cheated on him and there's like. You know, like I said that I got in trouble when I said that to <laughs> that August Alcina dick down Jada Pinkett Smith and he doesn't have a scratch on him. But but, but Chris Rock tells a joke and he gets it like I, that's what I'm saying. So it's like people defending Will is like there's way more stuff happening within their marriage that like Will felt a need to either like 
be some protective type of shit to his wife where he had to take it out yeah. on Chris. You know, it's where people like- defending him is kind of like he is clearly not right for doing what he did. So like it's almost like he tried to reestablish his manhood because yes. his manhood got dragged through the mud with the whole August Alcina thing. You know what I'm yes. saying? Yes. So and he's like I'm you know I'm tired of getting pushed around type shit. But again, the people who defend <coughs> excuse me, the people who defend him are almost making the point of like um it, it's like it's an authentic reaction of a man trying to defend his wife and it's not and like you know i'm trying to i'm trying to make the best argument i can for the other side here and play devil's advocate <laughs> that they like have... you know oh she's you know if he makes fun of that medical condition since it's a medical condition it crosses the line and therefore he's like defending the honor of his wife and the the thing that i think is true which i think you can see this in will's eyes in his speech and also with when he did that shit he just looks like he's a little unbalanced right now you know what i'm saying like he looks like he's off doesn't yep. he like yeah. he doesn't look like he's he's on good times, you know. No, it looks like he's going through some shit. Like there, like I hate to compare him to Kanye, but it looks like there's just mentally something off with him. Like yeah, I think it was you like know, Anthony Hopkins said something about him, and like he had his like he tried to put on his will laugh that was like, <laughs> and it was just mm-hmm. like you seem crazy right now, dog. Yeah, he's got that. I mean, he is. What is he? A Scientologist? Is he still a Scientologist? Part of that religion? That's oh, like, I don't know. I mean, but I, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. I. I wouldn't be surprised. But I know he's like all on Instagram doing all this. Like, I think he's like really like trying to like be one with life because he yeah. understands how precious it is. Type of shit, and it's like all this stuff happening he's trying to live in the moment all this weird shit but it's like dude just relax you were fine as you were as like dog i'm gonna say something controversial now but i believe it to be true that like anybody who gets too big on that shit or gets too big on like spirituality yeah and gets too big on like the motivational shit or whatever when you go too far down that rabbit hole you're trying to mask or find something that's gonna get you through the next day you know what i'm saying like you're if you're reading all these books from like gurus and and you're deep into the weeds of the new age spiritual psychology stuff, like usually those people are trying to fill a void and they're searching for anything, you know, and yeah. like they'll post about it. But it's like really it has the energy of like, here's why I didn't put a bullet in my head today. It's like uh, I feel bad for you, dog. But it's it, I think it's sort of transparent. Like, I know my point is controversial, but I think if people sit sit on that point for a minute, they might, they'll they realize that there's a lot of truth in that. that. Like, usually the people who are going for that shit, it's like the people who turn in really, really dark times to religion. It's like, you're doing that as a crutch. Like, you're trying to find something. And I'm not hating on that. I'd much rather Will spend all of his time doing that than punching people in the fucking face. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I don't Maybe if he was punching people in the face, he'd get more aggression out or some shit. Don't try and act like you're all this, like... I'm living life to the fullest and jumping out of helicopters and everything's glory when in reality you can just walk up on stage and slap somebody on the face, be it Chris Rock. I just, I'm like, the whole situation is kind of bugged out because it's like, I, I was looking at a couple of Ken Klippenstein's tweets and it's just like nothing better than like 50 year old multimillionaires, like, you know, fighting on stage at the Oscar, you know, like at the end of the day, kind of fuck both of them i i really don't care about the situation <laughs> but, but like you know it's kind of like this is the most glamorous award show they're wearing five thousand dollar tuxedos like and we're like just all talking about it it's like i don't i don't care i i i do want to shout out denzel because he is still the gs motherfucker in the room yeah at he all calm down will during the commercial break and then he, he said some down well shit to him, too. You know what he said quote, to him from the speech? Yeah, do you know what the quote was? Because it was just like... That's the first time I ever heard it. He said, when you're at your highest, the devil comes for you. When you're was, at your highest point, the devil comes for you. It was so gangster, man. He it said was mad... Just, in that podcast you sent me, too, he said mad shit that was, like... Bangers. Genius. Like, yeah. these little cliches or platitudes he picked up uh, over the years. One of them that I, I've heard before, but I, he said it in it, too, was like, you can't put a U-Haul behind a hearse. Yeah. Which is like, don't care about material it's not about material shit. It's about like real world impact stuff. Yeah. He's, I think he, Denzel, it looks to me like he sympathized with Will because Will looks like he's going through a whole bunch of shit and he's like, 
miserable and Denzel was trying to give him a helping hand of like, Hey man, like you're going to be all right. Like you snap there, you know, and that's, no, not I okay. mean, but it's a perfect quote because it's like at your highest moment, you know, the devil's going to try and do what he can to like bring you back down to either like normalcy or to your, like to rock bottom. But yeah, I think Denzel was just consoling him because he was a friend and also Chris Rock wasn't there either for him to talk to, you know, like Chris kind of just went backstage and like, who knows what happened to Chris Rock, where he went. But the whole situation is kind of just bugged out. And it was just, again, a part of me still wants like, like for a, a Netflix special to come out or them to be doing a movie. Yeah, together. You, you want it to be fake, right? You want, it, want to it to be, be fake. fake because so, I feel like Will has always just been that normal dude that just gets it. Like there's that one clip of like, some reporter guy giving him a hug and kind of gets a little bit close and will gives him like, a, like a little like Pat, but it wasn't like a smack, like the Chris rock smack. Yeah. But it was yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. I like, remember that. Let's be normal here. What are you doing? And I kind of was like, yo, will I fuck with will on that? But, but I don't know how to feel about dude right now. So, um, let me tell you, uh, let me give you more specifics on the poll. Cause I found this interesting. So slapping Chris Rock is unpopular in all demographics, but women and young people are more supportive of Smith than men or older Americans. So that's wow. the, that's one point I wanted to make. It's still underwater, but there's more women and young people. 18 to 34 year olds, 27 uh, percent of them say it's right. 28 uh, percent say unsure. Only 46 percent say it's wrong. Huh. Men, 64 percent say it's wrong. 57 percent of women say it's wrong. Um and then the other thing is Will did apologize. So he he released an apology. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah. He said, um, I have, I don't, I'm not going to read the whole shit, but. To Chris quote, though, I, because. What's to Chris. Yeah. Oh, Cause okay. when he did, gave his speech, he did not apologize exactly. to Chris. He apologized to the Academy and to like the viewers and shit. Yeah, he did not yeah. apologize to Chris, but now he did. He said, I, I was wrong and I, I was out of line and I was wrong. I'll give a little bit more so people could hear it. Violence in all its forms is poisonous and destructive. My behavior last night at last night's Academy Awards was unacceptable and inexcusable. Jokes at my expense are part of the job, but a joke about Jada's medical condition was too much for me to bear, and I reacted emotionally. I would like to publicly apologize to you, Chris. I was out of line, and I was wrong. I was embarrassed, and my I am embarrassed, and my actions were not indicative of the man I want to be. There's no place for violence in a world of love and kindness. I would also like to apologize to the Academy, the producers of the show, all the attendees, and everyone watching around the world. I would like to apologize to the Williams family and my... And and my King Richard family, I deeply regret that my behavior was has stained what has been an otherwise gorgeous journey for all of us. I am a work in progress. Sincerely, Will. Fuck him. I don't. Care <laughs> I was gonna say that's actually a pretty good apology, but like he was such a beloved figure beforehand. Yeah. That having done it and then now apologizing like a day later, I do think he's gonna mostly get forgiven by most people, and I think that. I think that. You know, there's an old code of ethics, like the old school code of ethics from back in the day, like the primitive code of e ethics is like, look, you do what you do, whatever you do to protect your like you're vicious on behalf of your family. Mm -hmm. If there's anything that even slightly crosses the line, you take matters into your own hands. And I think that that's the way a lot of people are viewing it. Like, you know, you can't disrespect somebody over a medical condition and then expect that shit to just slide. And Will even said it in his speech. He was like, we're expected in this business to just have people say whatever and just take it and it's okay. And he, he basically was saying like, well, I'm not down with that or whatever. And so I think a lot of people who hold that viewpoint, who hold that old school set of ethics and people who feel like I'm really protective of my family, that they look at it and they're a little more sympathetic to it. And now that he apologized, I think that a lot of people are going to are gonna, you know, agree with him or, or at least forgive him. But the thing that I couldn't get over is the precedent that it sets, because if you like, think about it. So the precedent that you're setting is you could hit somebody over an offensive joke, but like people are offended at fucking every, like people get offended at everything and anything. Like everybody's offended by some shit. And if you've ever yep. watched one of those roast battles, they say oh. the most over the top vicious shit to each other for comedy. They're trying to be edgy. Next They're trying level. to be funny. Next level. And so if we really enforce that that mindset and we allow that to be the standard, then every single roast battle would become a fucking melee and people would be 
attacking each other just become a giant brawl. And then every yep. single time you go to a comedy, like we've been to the, to the comedy store, we've been to comedy clubs and we've seen these comedians. What should we just expect? Should it be like professional hockey where people fight every like 15 minutes or some shit? Like should, should you just have people fighting at like people storming the stage and trying to punch comedians? Cause they say something, they make fun of them a little too aggressively or whatever. It's just, you can't set that, that standard. That standard is crazy. And I, again, I find it insane that I have to, I have to even argue this given that it's fucking 2022. But I think the thing that made it difficult for people is that everybody just likes Will Smith. You know, like I like Will Smith. We love Will Smith. We grew up on Will Smith. Of course. And so like when he does it, you're, you're almost more inclined to be like, Mike, let me look at both sides of this. Let me see what's going. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like that just warps people's perspective on it. I'm curious how, I don't know how I would have, because people were kind of mad at the audience. Like, how can you, you know, after the fact. How can you clap for him after he won his award, this or that? I kind of don't know how I would react in that moment. Like, would I still be clapping? I guess I would just kind of be in shock. Like, I so, still think this is a bit. So I think this goes back to a conversation that we've had before on the podcast back in the day about the whole, like, remember when Nourishell High School took down all of Ray Rice's shit? Yep. Because he did domestic abuse. And yep, so yep. they're just like, well, now we're going to take away all your, like, high school fucking football awards. Yeah. I do think it's the same category for this that like the only the only counter argument is like well he just did that like he did that shit like 15 fucking minutes ago so it's like super fresh in everybody's memory yeah but because the even the academy by the time this drops i don't know if we'll get new news on it we're recording this like the the will scandal happened super recently this is going to drop a few days later so i don't know but they're talking about maybe the academy is going to revoke his oscar because he he violated kind of od See, that's what I'm, I agree with that because it, it has no like what he did does not tarnish in any way, shape or form the amazing acting job that he did in that movie. Yeah. You know, so you can't say that because you're fucked up in this way that therefore anything you've ever done that's good doesn't count anymore. I think that that's essentializing him as the worst act of his entire life. But then you got to realize, like, we should treat all people like that. Then it shouldn't just be rich and famous people. There shouldn't be a justice system for rich and famous people. And then everybody else gets fucked. You shouldn't if you like every criminal is defined by the worst action in their life. But Will Smith, this is going to be it's going to affect him, but it's going to be one of, out of like 50 things people think about when they think about Will Smith. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, I forgot what I was just going to say. Um, I forgot what I was going to say on it, but it'll come back to me. Yeah, I don't remember it, but yeah, the whole situation sucks and. It's just weird, and everyone's talking about this shit. But it's it made for some. I, I was reading some funny tweets this morning. Oh, people and it are made crazy, for some, man. You you were laughing at the comedy tweets or the serious ones that were retarded. Oh, I you, I'm sorry. I I, I apologize. <laughs> the R word. I meant to say the ones that are bad. Um, get in trouble. I can't. <laughs> my mouth has gotten ahead of me yet again. <laughs> the um, uh, the the comedy like the com- the comedy ones were just like comical, like just. People joking about like Jada and her, the the person she cheated on him with. Like, there was so much stuff that I was reading through that I was just laughing. It's just like the amount of attention. Like, it's just crazy how like a regular ass Sunday night can just flip on its head at a drop of like one thing. You know, like yeah, like literally one action by. Oh, I remember what I was gonna say. To your point, when Will said in the speech, we, we have to like laugh and take this as celebrities. It's the same thing that's kind of happened with like Russell, Russell, Russell Westbrook and like athletes yes. and stuff like this. Yes. At what point like do, do you get paid enough money where you do have to take some criticism and jokes because everyone jokes on Will for his ears and like, you know, like, is there any threshold? Like, like, do we not get to say anything about anyone just because like, you say so or can we critique you if you slap somebody in the face or if you are bad at basketball right now like we allowed to say shit i think the point that they're trying to make is that when you're not in the public eye you don't get any scrutiny now that we're in the public eye everybody feels like they could say anything to us i think that's the point they're trying to make but But here's why that point because people that's what i was gonna say here's why that point is not at all true everybody gets shit online are you kidding me Everybody gets dogpiled on Twitter from time to time or on Facebook or fucking wherever, like Instagram, anywhere people are like people just say fucked up shit to each other because we're online. If you're face to face with somebody, people aren't going to say 90 percent of the messed up shit that they do say. Never. But when you're online, 
people just talk shit. Like, it's part of what the internet is. So, like, yeah, the fact of the matter with Russell Westbrook is, dog, you're playing terrible basketball. And people are going to point out that you're playing terrible basketball. Like, he was mad that they're call- people are calling him Westbrick. Yeah. Like, but you miss fucking shots all the time. Like, people are going to call And your name you lines up with Brick and Brooke. Like, yeah. Like, you just got to take your lumps. And that was one one of the things I said about Will, too, is, like, it is par for the course. You're at the Oscars. You're in the front row. You're rich. You're famous. You're powerful. Like, part of that is people are going to fucking hate on you. You know, it it's just, it L. is what it is. Yeah. For everybody who supports you, there's going to be somebody who's like, fuck him. Yeah. The whole, the whole thing is weird. I, I just, it just seems too fake again, how there was that perfect first couple that he made the joke on that wasn't bad and then goes to will and there's just another perfect couple right there for him to joke on them like how did he know to jump right to will i don't know the whole shit the whole shit sucks but like i'm, I enjoy, still, I'm not gonna I enjoy watch your the conspiracy Oscars, theorizing i think it's it's funny i like it <laughs> i'm just i mean i'm always looking for a conspiracy in something because i think they're like i think there's a conspiracy in everything i think there's like money behind things i think there's ratings behind things this is just like i don't trust anybody so like the nba i think they're like like shady with their referees and stuff like yeah that. well you sold me on the the nba being rigged a long time ago about you know and they proved it in what was it 2006 when Dwayne wade won with Shaq. Yeah, well, like tim donahue was the referee and like he was taking one like they proved it yeah, yeah. there's just I, I just don't trust a lot of things and last night with the oscars i didn't trust that so like Will, I'm sure he's doing fine. Chris Rock will be fine. All those people at the Oscars, fuck all of them because it's just like I, I don't really have any sympathy for all you people just patting yourselves on the back at these award shows. Um, and then they, they had the people come out for The Godfather. You know I've never seen The Godfather. Really? Is that, is that like a – is that a bad thing? Um, It's kind of weird. It is kind of really? strange. Oh, yeah, that's like, you know, well, you also never saw Star Wars, right? Yeah, no, I've never seen Star Wars either. Yeah, I mean, that's like you're are missing Are you a Star some... Wars guy, though? Or I'm you not, I mean, saw Star Wars because you had to see Star Wars. Well, you know, Star Wars fans are like all about Star Wars. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah, real yeah, yeah. Star Wars fans like go to conventions and shit. Like, but I so... feel like if you saw one Star Wars, you're kind of like a Star Wars guy. No, I mean, many people have seen Star Wars and they're like, yeah, it was a good movie or yeah, it was a bad movie, but they've seen it. I'm one of those people <laughs> that was like, yeah, it was OK. I was mildly entertained for however long it was. But I, I actually haven't seen all of them because now there's like 187 of them. <laughs> there really are like 90. Like they didn't. They changed directors. They changed the like, titles. They changed every. I'm so I worked the Star Wars like Comic Con type of thing one time. I was so fascinated by the amount of knowledge that these people like they knew in like the fourth movie that there was a random guy with a blue shirt on who stood behind one character for like a half a second. And they're like, there's this little like underground star Wars, like universe of like people get excited, like being that weird character who's only in the movie for like a half a second. So like, I just want to watch a movie and if it makes sense to me, I'm good. I don't need like all the extra little shit, like what color couch someone sat on, in the fourth movie of a trilogy that is 19 movies. Like, I'm, I'm good there. So is that why you haven't watched it? Because the fans annoy you? Is that why you've never no, watched it? No, no, the fans don't annoy me. I'm, I'm like, I actually fuck with the fans because I'm, I, I love their passion for the movie. I just have no interest of trying to learn that, like, you really got to watch the sixth one first, which is the first one, and then if you watch the fifth one, that's really the second yeah. There's a debate about how to watch it because yeah, like, they did prequels, and so they're like, if you watch if you watch a prequel first, you're watching a newer movie, but it's earlier in the story. That's what I'm you saying. Know? Like, I th- I mean, I think you should give it a shot, and same with The Godfather. Like, you might as well watch. Although, look, I don't think I think that you're probably more likely to like Star Wars over The Godfather, in my opinion, because Godfather was great, but it's one of those old school stories where it's like it. It drags out like they're a little slow. They're moving, telling a sure. long story. It's slow moving. But Star Wars, you might I mean, at least one of the 85 of them, you're going to like you'll be like, oh, I sort of like that one. Loki, I the one that gets the most hate is the one that I enjoyed the most. But it was probably just because of my age. And like when I saw it, I saw it in theaters and it was really cool. Um, I like the one that had Darth Maul. 
who apparently everybody hates and despises. But oh, I, thought he's he was, the, I know Darth Maul is the red guy with like the like weird face. like yeah and shield. They had, a great late, uh, they had a great lightsaber fight scene. Such a good one in one of the in the movie that he was in. Yeah, was, that's I, I yeah, that's like an iconic poster. I, I, like I, mom, my Molly's uncle has a poster that's like a famous one. I think that might have been like Return of the Jedi or something like that. No, that's the that's the original. That's one of the originals. Oh, the one, okay. I'm, the one I'm thinking of, I don't even know the name of it, but it was like him versus Qui Gon Jinn versus Obi Wan Kenobi, some shit like that. And it was like, it was a good. I remember watching that fight scene back a million times over because I thought the way they moved the lightsabers was so cool. But yeah, it's worth it if you want. You know, if you got a just, weekend where you're somewhat free, you might want to. Just, or I don't have TV. enough like brain capacity. Like when Molly watches all six of the Harry Potters and then like can watch all six of them right after watching all six of them, I'm like, I I don't know the names of characters, movies that I watch like one time that they repeat over and yeah. over and over again. Well, that's what people warned me that about Game of Thrones, that they thought yeah, I wouldn't like it because there's too much you have to learn about too many people in order yeah. to get into it. By the way, you see my. Uh... Oh, <laughs> what is that from? Like our catchphrase, dog. It's like I our need catchphrase. that. How do I not have one? So I think what happened with this was years ago. Remember when uh, a listener to Kyle and Corin made the super cut? Yeah, of, of course. You and me saying 100%, right? Of course. And a legendary video. Props to whoever made that because it that's a lot of work to get all the times we were like 100% on the show. I mean, they, they had it. It was so long that. I love that clip. Yeah, that clip is great. And so Corin and I don't even know we do it. Like we had no idea we even said it. But then yeah. that came and we're like, oh shit, that's that's what we say. So anyway, I showed that video to my mom years ago. Yeah. And she loved it too. She thought it was hilarious. And so she went out of her way to try to find a sweatshirt that, or a shirt that said 100. percent And she found one. I don't even know the name of the company or anything. I mean, maybe the name of the company is 100. percent I have no idea. That looks like the 100 percent that they put on a Clorox bottle. I, I have no idea, but that my looks mom like fine. and somebody, she definitely didn't buy the shirt from Clorox. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but somebody she, uh, look up Clorox when this comes out and put that logo next to their writing. It's the same font. So she got this shirt for me for Christmas, like three years ago or something like that. Oh, so have I seen this before? I think maybe once before you oh, have, I don't remember, but now I was going to ask you, like, I like the hoodie you were wearing. And then I saw, yeah, when, yeah, hundred percent, baby, this is. That's like awesome that your mom it's like, rocks it's like with the show it. like that. No, she doesn't watch it. She only, <laughs> you know, whatever little clips, you know, she sees here or there, she likes. But, yeah, I mean, classic, man, classic. I, I will say, so it's amazing watching what's been happening What's the with the response. Because you were to, telling me the responses to uh, to our us being back. Oh, shout Because the responses out to everyone, were man. so positive. It's so overwhelmingly positive. Like, this it's show. So cool to see gets a shitload of love. This show gets way more love than my show. Like my nah, show, no, it, nah, it's true. My show is big enough where there's like an equal amount of haters to the lovers. You know what I'm saying? Whereas yeah, right. we're, we're niche. And so we get the, like the pure love, but it's interesting because yeah, like we get the overwhelming love, but the numbers are still, you know, significant. Like we should, this, keep it real. This podcast deserves like a hundred thousand views on this shit. You know, I just enjoy doing this shit, man. I'm happy. Like, when too, one man. when one person comments on that shit, like, like that shit is so cool. Like when someone writes some shit that like, hey, you were at the lunch table with me when I was like, Jen I like that. Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You showed me the comments. I was like, yeah. yeah someone was like, I, I, I used to sit at lunch and no one would sit with me because like, I'm not even being corny, but like, if I was in that lunchroom and I saw homeboy sitting there, like I like we would sit with dude. Like it's not even on some shit with people. Like it's like. I keep it real with people who keep it real. Like, so it's like, there's no fluff in what I'm saying. So when people are coming at me because they think I have some wrong, crazy take that's fucked up, I didn't mean that shit if it hurts you. <laughs> like, you know, like, it wasn't intentional. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not condoning anything bad and I'm not saying anything bad to, to just say it because that's the good thing. I'm saying shit that I just like, honestly, am just saying. So like, same goes with if I see someone who looks like a friendly person who's just sitting, chilling, eating, I'm going to sit down and just like talk to you. But like you start getting weird and sending me like a million DMs in a row or some shit, I'm going to try and leave the table. Like, <laughs> so like just keep it 100, like just keep it real. And like some people will send me DMs of like, they're like, hey, like someone sent me some shit that was like, hey, I got my parents watching the show now and they put like they showed me the TV. I was like, that's what's up, you know, like. 
But then shout someone will like 900 shout shits out to in a row. Parents, if you're watching. Yeah, shout out to your parents. If parents. They, they Remember one time that shit off right away. <laughs> we mentioned on the show years ago, we said something about like most of the viewers are younger. And then like there were a zillion comments of like, I'm 68 and I watch this shit. Oh. And we were like, that's what's up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, shout out to all the 68 year olds if you're still it, alive with us. It's funny because it's a uniquely, <laughs> it's like a uniquely millennial vibe on the show though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The Zoomers would think we're old idiots, you yeah. know? And like the older people would look at us as like, I don't even know how they look at us. They look at us like brash assholes or something, you know, but the, like the, the culture, the, the like pop culture references and shit are so uniquely from our era. Like when I played that Inoge song on the, oh, street, you know what I'm saying? That was a banger. Yeah. Yeah. And like, like rocking with Will Smith is something that like we, that was like, like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was like, that was, oh. that was it for us. Oh it was one it's it's to this day it holds up to this day man like so, it holds yeah. up to this day that's impressive so, so that's why like will doing that shit kind of affected the twitter era like crazy you know like old people obviously know will smith but they don't know will smith like we know will smith yeah like you look at him like that's your boy that's how you yeah. feel about him yeah. yeah and to them it's kind of like oh he's a movie star but it's like no like that's will smith like he doesn't he's he doesn't do that shit. he's the fresh prince and just smooth ass dude that's true. But I don't know. So anyway, shout out to all, like, cause sometimes I'll just like scroll through that shit. And I'm just like, I'm one always blown away that you're my boy because like your show is just the shit. And like the fact that we do this is like, cool that we've, people, we've been friends forever, dog. We've no, been I know, friends but forever. The fact that anyone watches this shit, I still get fascinated. So like, like numbers, I don't give a shit anything like, yeah, but it should still be a hundred thousand people <laughs> watching this shit. Like it should still be a hundred thousand people watching this shit. This is golden. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah, there should be like a fucking million people watching this shit. But like, even the fact that one person comments, like, I'm like, I'm watching this shit from wherever. I'm like, I give you props for watching this shit because I wouldn't watch this shit. Nah, you no, know I'm what? Low key, I'm, ba- I'm about to go in the other direction. I just said 100,000 people should watch this. But if we lock the community now, then it's just nothing but positive vibes. <laughs> so so yeah. it never gets to the point where people are hating, you know? Like, whenever something gets too big, like, look at what happened with Rogan. Like, and don't don't get me wrong, like, a lot of shit, I don't agree with the co- some of the COVID people he had on who were just, like, saying things that were totally not true and, like, yeah. that shit is dangerous. But it is true that almost no matter what, when you got to a size as big as him, like, when he got a $100 million plus dollar contract from Spotify, like, that made people in mainstream media raise their eyebrows and be like, what's going on over here? And they're like, That's well, true. here's 80,000 negative stories about it now to try to take it down a few notches. So when you get too big, no matter what, there's always going to be the massive voices of like dissent and disagreement. And on the one hand, that's a beautiful thing because you want people to like sort of hold you accountable and make sure you're doing a good job. But on the other hand, there's going to be some percentage that are just flat out malicious and they just don't fucking like you for whatever dumb reason they don't like you. And they're just going to try to tear you down on some shit. And so maybe if we lock the size that we're in right now and just keep it like this, then we'll have nothing but good vibes all day long. That's a good ass point. Yeah, no, if, if you, there's gotta be some, all right. So now, yeah, I'm gonna play devil's advocate too for a hot second. There's got to be some people too that comment that positive that comment some positive shit that also maybe have some negative shit that they want to say too. Write the negative shit too. I want to see some like negative shit. I don't want to see too much negative shit. Don't write the negative <laughs> shit. Just send me just send me the negative shit if you have any thoughts. I right? keep the shit positive, all right? No. Nah, to your point, if everything's just peaches and cream forever, like at at some point you're like what's happening here? You need a little bit of critique if if anything's going wrong. If anything's not going wrong, then that's what's up. But so I mean, so I agree with you, but it has to be substantive and it has yeah, to be yeah, like yeah. and the other thing is as <clears throat> as human beings, it has to be presented in a way that's not gonna make you put your guard up. Because you gotta think about it from the perspective like I've been doing this for like a decade, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And early on, I used to look at all the replies and everything, and I'd go, you know, I would Damn it. take certain criticism to heart because every now and then there'd be good criticism. And it's like, mm-hmm. they have a point on that shit. But then I do feel like the bigger I got, the more it became like unhinged responses yeah. became like, like, you're not even close to a critique that makes sense. Like, and it makes you want to double down and put up, put your guard up and be like, fuck you. Not only am I right, I'm tripling down on this shit. Yep. And so at some point it became, it's like not productive at a certain point. Because like, why am I wasting my time putting nothing but negativity and bile into my head 
when I could just not deal with that and I could do what I feel is right and what I feel is true to myself and then let the chips fall where they may. And ultimately, that's where, you know, I landed. But oh, yeah, to your point. point, as long as you trust everybody within a community, then and, and people aren't like socially maladjusted where they don't know how to bring up a point in a in a positive way, even if it's a criticism, like then it's it's OK as long as it's part of like a trusted general community. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but no, when it gets totally. too big, it just becomes unmanageable. Yeah, and to Denzel's point, it's kind of weird that, like, with success comes that devil trying to, like, find something to pull you back down. Like, they, I mean, it's true that, like, at the end of the day, people don't really want to see you succeed, you know, like, which is fucked up in our, like, human nature as, like, a society. Well, you know, I think it's interesting you say that. I think there's truth in that, but then I also see sometimes the opposite. Like, I always call myself... I'm the biggest sports snob on the planet. And what mm -hmm. I mean by that is everybody likes to root for the underdog and shit in sports. Wrong. I want to see the person who's about to make history, who's won a zillion times over and is about to win a zillion and one times. I'm the biggest Tiger Woods fan on the planet. I love Kobe Bryant when he was alive. Michael Jordan, too. I mean, I was too young to really witness his greatness. But if I was old enough, I would have been, you know, the biggest Michael Jordan fan Didn't on the like planet. Didn't you like Wayne Gretzky, too? Uh, you I was not. Bit? Gretzky was a little before my time, too. He was a okay. little bit before my time, too. But, like, I love seeing greatness when it comes to sports. So, in a certain sense, I want success for, for people. But, again, I think the key difference is it has – you have to – everybody has to feel like it's earned. Like, I felt like everything that – sports is the ultimate meritocracy, which is what makes sports interesting and amazing. Yep. So, it's like – if somebody succeeds in it, they had to bust. They had to be naturally talented. Plus, they had to bust their ass relentlessly to get where they are, where they put in more hours than everybody else. They work on the technique and the strategy more than anybody else. And so that's the kind of stuff I like seeing success with. Now, on the flip side of that, to your point, if I see some like inauthentic ass YouTube channel with some fake ass influencer and they got like seven million subscribers, you know, and, and I'm and I'm looking at their shit like all this is drivel like it's all terrible and i feel like they didn't earn that shit yeah then that side of me comes out and i'm like sort of fuck you yeah like almost like fuck you i hope you don't get another subscriber again ever you know yeah so it's it, it it to me the key is is it authentic and is it like born out through hard work and commitment then i i'm rooting for you if that's yeah. the case but if it's not then i'm sort of like i don't care or i'm agnostic and indifferent or in some instances my worst side might come out and I'll be like, fuck that shit. Yeah, no, I kind of agree with you. I, I'm I'm kind of in the camp of like a, <clears throat> I don't care. Like, um, so Molly's sister told us recently that like, uh, one of Obama's daughters just got like the head writing job on, um, I saw that. uh, whatever the guy, uh, child Jordan Campino. Peele's. Oh, Jordan, Jordan Peele. Yeah. I think it was Jordan Peele's something. Oh, okay. Right? Um, was it Jordan Peele or no? no? I was, was it, it... Child is Gambino. The, yeah. What's um... his name again? Well, uh, I'll tell you in a sec. I'll tell you in a yeah. sec. I know what you're talking about. He had the he had that really good song, Donald Glover. Donald Glover is like show. And I was like, yeah, kind of. I don't care, and kind of also like like fuck her type of vibes because it was like. And she was like, yeah, but she went to Harvard. I was like, yeah, that's great. I mean, good for her. She's probably very qualified for that for that role and great. Um, but also she wouldn't have gotten it if she wasn't Obama's daughter. You yeah, know, like yeah. so mm -hmm. I'm not taking anything away of her education and, and her qualifications to do the job. But also there was someone who was not, you know, Barack Obama's daughter that could have maybe gotten that role. So like she's in a great position to succeed now because of who her father was. So like that's one where I kind of like don't care. But I, I don't, I don't see like where some people just have the hate to like, you know, pile on Joe Rogan or something like that because he signs a, a you know, a massive deal or someone gets a huge contract in sports or something like that. It's like, if they got that, then they got that. So on know. that, it's just weird that people have so much like to, to Will Smith's point, it's weird that people have so much like hate to like, just so quickly jump on a tweet and be like, yo, you're wrong for thinking Will's good. They, you know, doing this or that. It's like, Shut up. Um, on the um, on the Rogan point, I don't. I mean, maybe some people came after him when he got the big ass contract, but it really was more about the like the COVID stuff and then other yeah, things yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. Like on the money thing, I, so I agree with you on the 
Malia Obama thing. I saw that and I sort of rolled my eyes too. Like, yeah. it's one thing. Okay, you want to hire her? Okay. It's the fact that there were articles written about it. Like that. Like why? Like why are you writing articles about it? Like what yeah. the fuck is this? And there is a d- element of nepotism in there. And yeah, like I didn't like that. But on the on the big contract thing, like. Yeah, no, I'm I'm an old school lefty. Like when I see a big ass contract, I look at it and I'm like, they should tax that motherfucker higher. <laughs> like oh. that's a, I'm like, you got to take some of that money and you got to give people like health care and you got to give people college and you got to give people paid vacation time and shit. You know, the tax. So for the first year, this year, Molly did our taxes and she always does that shit to like a T. We were getting back like five thousand dollars or something cra- crazy, and we were like over the moon because like for the last three years. We were paying guap. Like, we would have to pay, like, $1,000 every year. And, like, they take mad money out of our paychecks. Then this year, we're finally getting back, like, $5,000. And then all of a sudden, she tells me, like, the next day, she's like, we, like, all of that, they're not giving us any of that money because they said, like, they were taking money back that we didn't pay from, like, 2019. Like, oh. some dumb shit that, like, didn't make any sense because we had paid every year. They never told us that we owed any money. And then the one year that we get money back, they're like, yeah, we're just going to take all that. Oh, my God. Like, doesn't it, it like and then there's no, like no number you can call. Like she filed some shit that told her, like, yeah, in 2019, you still owe this. But it was like, but you never told us. So you just can just take oh. the money that you said that we are getting back now. Oh. Like the, the whole tax shit that we get fucked on that, like rich people don't is just mind boggling. And it makes no sense to me that like yeah like, like bernie says like the that like rich people don't pay taxes and shit the irs goes after middle class people and poor people more than they go after the rich yeah that was something that you know i talked about recently i mean that's it's just it's crazy and by the way molly does all the taxes like she goes through the whole shit the whole shit oh my god a god bless her because let me tell you something i've done I've I, even just getting together like all the sh- fucking paperwork shit that I have to get together in order to give to the person to do my taxes. I can't eat like I can't even get through that shit. That always annoys the shit out of me. It's like, wait, I got it. I need that sheet of paper. I need this sheet. I don't even know where the fuck to get that sheet of paper. I get like, looking through old mail and shit trying Bro, to find some knock on like the most hardest piece of wood. But I told this to Molly. I was like, if you if anything ever were to happen to you, I don't know what like I would do as a human being because like. <laughs> I legit thought about it because like she showed me some crazy sped- spreadsheet she has of all her finances and stuff. And like I was like my like it was like my eyes popped out of my head type of shit. And then the first thing I thought about later that night when she showed me like here's some stuff. And if anything happened, this is where this is at and this and that. Later that night, I was dead ass sleeping in bed. I was like, I don't even know the password to her computer if this shit were to go down. <laughs> so like I couldn't even. My, that, that's where my mind went. I wasn't even thinking about bills and credit cards and shit. I was like, I can't even get into her computer to get to that file she just showed me. It's step one I type little, shit. Like, mouse running around in my head, man. I'm such a dummy. Nah, I feel you on that, man. It's step one type shit. Every fucking year when I have to get my tax shit together, I'm always like, can't they just find a way where <laughs> I don't have to do shit and they just take what they have to take? Like, you can't make me do some shit. Like, you you could be like, look, we're the government. We got to, we, you know, we got to take taxes like Just out, come to my house and ask for 20 bucks or, like, ask for, like, a set amount of money or some shit. But why do you got to make it so I got to find a receipt from, like, the beginning of the year that I bought McDonald's for or some shit? It's insane, man. Like, it requires so much shit. They could automatically file them, you know, and they could get change the law so that— Instead of having all these loopholes and deductions that you have to do the work to try to take the deduction, you just there are no loopholes and deductions, but the tax rate is just lower. Like they could have ways where it's simpler to do, but they want to make your life a living fucking hell. Yeah, they want to make it like collect all the sheets of paper, you know, call this person, do that thing, figure out how much this bill costs. Like I can't. It's so much, man. And that's I'm the same as you. So like. I can excel in very limited ways that I'm in ways that I'm good, like. That I, that I have an affinity for. Like, I could excel in certain ways, but then in so many normal life ways, I'm like, I don't want to do it, and I'm not going to do it. And I'm, like, useless, you know? I'm just like, I need help on top of help. Like, I need somebody to help me, and then somebody to help the person who's helping me, because yeah. I'm just useless. 
Yeah, and, and 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 she made this point to me. She was like, "If you had to figure it out, you would figure it out." Like certain things I do now that I've never done. Like I cut the grass. I like you know um, use a snow plow shit sometimes, and that's just by like I have to cut my grass. I have to do that shit. Whereas when I was growing up, I'd never used a lawnmower or a rake or any of this type of shit. But there's some things like taxes and just numbers and spreadsheets that like I just I wouldn't. I, I don't know how I would figure that out. And maybe I would, I, like, when you're kind of back against you the would. wall. You would. Yeah, you would, but that's you don't want to have to figure it out. I don't want to have to. Like, even the thought of having to figure it out gives you anxiety. Like, I don't, yeah. uh, don't want to do that shit. Yeah, any of that shit. I mean, like, having to bring my phone to the, like, Best Buy because some shit's not working gets me tight because it should just work. You pay too much money for shit. Like, that's what I'm saying with the taxes. Like, can't they just be like, all right, everybody pays a thousand dollars on February seventeenth, and then every February seventeenth, you just got to pay a thousand bucks? Like, do some universal shit. Like, we all make around the same. You know, like some people make more money, some people make less. Like, if you're dead broke, you got to have like a handwritten letter, like in school, where you just send that shit in, and you're just like, yeah, I can't pay this month. Here, it's signed by my mom saying that I'm dead ass broke. You know, like, but if you can afford this shit, like, just pay some shit. <laughs> like. It's not, it's not, it's not too much where you're like, fuck, but it's not too little where like, you're kind of abusing it. It's a rate that like, you're like, fuck tax season's here. But with the way they make it so complicated, I kind of don't even get mad at like Wesley Snipes because it's like, yeah, if I'm you, I'd be confused as fuck too. If I was making mad money and yeah, doing no, pull, him, going strip him, clubs. Is different. <laughs> him, him is different. It wasn't on some like, I'm lazy shit or I don't know how to do this shit. It, or I don't have the money shit with Wesley Snipes. It was like it was ideological because wasn't he like he was a believer in the notion that the Constitution makes it so that taxes are illegal, like income taxes are illegal. Oh, he tried to have like some like deeper meaning shit. Yeah, to his he not tried, paying taxes. Yeah, he was part of some like right wing economics movement where he believed like it's unconstitutional for the government to make me pay income tax. So he made a point of not paying his taxes. Oh, so yeah, for him, it was a little bit of a different story. I don't think it was on some just like lazy shit or confused shit or and also he's got a gazillion dollars like he's the problem Bernie was talking about or one of the pro well, not really, because Bernie's talking about more about billionaires and corporate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, he's a multimillionaire, like pay your shit, dog. But like I'm with you on the I've always advocated this shit like you have to make it. It's got to be easier. The whole process has to be easier. Get rid of all the loopholes and all the deductions. Come up with a rate that's a real rate that people should pay depending on the amount of money that they make. Yep. Yes, I have much higher taxes on the wealthy than I would on, you know, middle class people. And it, you have a, what's called a progressive tax rate. So, like, you know, the lowest bracket you could have for people who don't have any money, they don't pay any taxes. Then you go up at 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. But, like, they got to make it easier. The way they do it now is archaic. The way they do it now is so fucking stupid. It's annoying. And it just makes me... It makes me realize, like, there's so many things that make me realize how broken the system is. Like, let's do this in the least efficient, most annoying way possible is what happens when, you know, tax season rolls around. <laughs> like, nobody likes, like, th th doing it the way we do it helps breed resentment yeah. in the country. You know, yeah. like, if they automatically took the shit out, a fair amount for everybody, then... And that shit went towards healthcare for everybody and college for everybody and, like, paid vacation time... And it went towards building new infrastructure that made everything beautiful. People would be like, that's what's up. I paid my taxes today. Like it came out of my account automatically and I, here's all the shit it's going for. They give you like a, a list of here's all the shit that your shit is going towards. And you'd be like, that's what's up. But the fact, the fact that like they could just straight be like, yeah, we're just taking your $5,000. And, and if the IRS, if anybody's worked watching this shit or is the IRS even who does, yeah, they do the taxes. Yeah, the right? IRS does it. Hmm. I would never do this, but like next year makes me so badly just want to be like, yo, just don't even report any of this shit. Like, fuck them. Because like if they could just do that shit to us without even a care, it's like to your point, I'm so resentful of just giving anything because they just take that money, which to us is impactful. But to them is just a drop in the bucket. And there's no like reasoning for that shit. So it's just yeah. like the, that's the a fucking scam, man, is the government. The fact that they're shaking you down as opposed to shaking down like 
some corporation that literally dodged all their taxes and paid 0%. Like Netflix paid 0%, it was reported. GE paid 0%. There are some companies, I remember covering these stories, there are some companies that literally had what's called a negative tax rate, which means not only did they not pay shit, they got money back from the government. It was just a subsidy they got from taxpayers. The fact that they shake down just regular working people and you have these big companies and these billionaires who pay nothing. I mean, that was that was another big story that came out of the Trump years is that for the first time ever after his big tax cut bill got through, you had the effective tax rate paid by billionaires was lower than working class people, which is like, Jesus fucking Christ. So, if, you know, they'll they're paying five percent, 10 percent, 12 percent or whatever on their money. Some working class persons paying 15 percent, 18 percent on their money. It's like, how the fuck is that possible? And there were plenty of instances of that beforehand, but it was like systemic under Trump beforehand. I remember in like, I don't know what year it was, like 2010 maybe or some shit you had. I think it was Warren Buffett issued a challenge to all the CEOs in the countries. And he was like, Mm -hmm. if you guys can show me that you pay a higher tax rate than your secretaries do, I'll give you a million dollars of my own money. And none of them did because all of them paid fucking less. That's so bizarre. And that's what they do is they shake down working people and they fucking let the rich dodge all their taxes and use loopholes and deductions and hide them in offshore tax havens and put it in assets and all sorts of fucked up shit. So I got a question. Is Trump doing rallies again? Like, where did this re- Mayor Green say all these comments? Like, where are they saying all these comments? Are those oh, Trump rallies? Yeah, Trump is Trump is still doing rallies. He's still just, doing he's rallies. He's like randomly there. going around doing rallies. Well, in theory, the idea is he's he's endorsed candidates in different races. And so he's going to campaign for those candidates. But really, okay. they're Trump rallies. And yeah. They're, they The most recent one he had, they were saying the attendance was not as good as all of his previous shits. Oh, really? It, it kind of fallen off. And some of his candidates that he had endorsed are not, they're not leading. Like, they're not doing as well. Yeah, I mean, people are going to flop. Like, they're going to, they're on his bandwagon when he's hot, and then they'll, like, disassociate with him when he's not. You know, like, it's like. I think he's fucking up, though, like, because he cannot stop talking about the rigged election, rigged election, rigged election. He's still talking? Like, that's his thing? I thought the critical race theory thing is, like, what's super hot right now. he's still talking about, he's talking about that, too, but in every, he cannot stop talking about the rigged election thing, and now that there was a poll that I covered on my show, only 15% of even Republicans say, yeah, we should talk about that moving forward, and so he's losing steam, dog. Like, he is losing steam. The only problem is, of course, if he's up against Joe Biden and in 2024 that's a fucking coin toss because it's like biden ain't doing shit biden's approval rate is low as fuck you know i low-key think it's gonna be the dude from florida ron DeSantis. you think he's gonna beat trump i don't know if he'll beat trump but like they're they're gonna make like a super team that's like kind of oh you think he's gonna be vp yeah oh that could because like them two together is like you know upper sticker central like people would go bananas for those two so here's the problem, though. You have a good theory. You have a good theory. And that might end up being what it is. Like, mm. that could definitely happen. But as of right now, the problem is <clears throat> Trump hates Ron DeSantis. Yeah. Because he feels threatened by Ron DeSantis. And so he's sort of been taking little pot shots at him here and there. And Ron DeSantis hasn't, like, fully kissed the Trump ring yet at all. Um, and they got into a big disagreement over. So Trump. You know, the vaccine was created while Trump was in office and he yeah. takes credit for it and everything. And so he's out there saying, like, yeah, I got vaccinated. Yeah, I got boosted. You should take the shot like it's good. And Trump's right about that. Mm-hmm. But Ron DeSantis was dodging the question of whether or not he got boosted. And Trump was like, just say it. Like, why are you being a bitch? Like, just say that shit. So <laughs> they were sparring over that. But really, the reason why Trump is it doesn't like DeSantis is because DeSantis is the only one who's even remotely close to him in all these polls. Yeah. So like, you know, he's still got Trump still got a solid lead, but DeSantis is sort of nipping at his heels. That's why I think they don't want to, neither of them want to like give any ground of like showing love to each other because they still think they both have the shot at being president. But once there's a clear cut favorite, like if DeSantis pulls ahead, I don't know. I mean, I don't see Trump being like a, could Trump even be a VP? I don't even know if that's a thing. Uh, Yeah, he could. Oh. Yeah, but I don't know if I, I think his ego wouldn't. Yeah, wouldn't, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think he would. Um, but like, yeah, he still wants to be top dog. The other dude wants to be top dog. So until DeSantis probably realizes he can't, you know, get over Trump, then he'll like get on board with him. But like, that's a good point. Yeah, DeSantis has a really hard path, I think, to the nomination as long as Trump is still in the picture mm-hmm. because it's tough, man. Like, the Trump people like him. So yeah. the Trump people like him. So since they like him, it's like, how do you find a way 
to differentiate yourself from Trump to appeal to the normies and the independents who you need to win a general election? Like, how do you appeal to new people while also being hitched to that Trump bandwagon? Yeah. You got to be like, I'm different from him, but not so different. And I still sort of like him, but I don't like him too much. Like, it's just too hard a, a path. You got to thread the needle perfectly, you know? And um, this is a long shot, but Bernie's probably too old for 24, right? Yeah. I, you know, I don't think he's going to run again. Uh-huh. I don't think he's going to run again. Um, I think that, yeah, 2020, he's, I mean, Trump and Biden are really old, but they're not going to be, they're not as old as Bernie. Uh-huh. And so I don't. I don't think he's going to run again. Yeah. Um, and he made some strategic mistakes last time. There's chatter now about him trying to ha- pass the torch on to somebody. So who knows? We'll see. Um, so I, I, the the things I have on my list for today, which, by the way, we got to only one of them so far, <laughs> the Will Smith thing. <laughs> my bad. But, no, it's all good. Um, I watched Bill Maher has oh. a new podcast did you see it or no no i haven't i don't so he's got, know what he's up to okay so he's got this new podcast he calls it club random and he says like most of the week he's prepping for real time and trying to write his monologue and trying to get all his jokes down and like he's working nonstop. but there's he has like you know a couple free hours on one of the days where he takes a break and now he's using those couple hours where he has people come i think to his house into one of the rooms and they do a podcast uh-huh. and so I, I, I watch it. I'll get I'll get to it in a second. The like what it was like. Yeah. But is it visual or just listening? It, it, it's you could listen to the audio version, but there is a video version. It's on YouTube. Oh, okay. So the first thing that annoyed me about it was he's he's got ads in it. And I was looking at it like. Dog, you're Bill Maher. You got like a zillion dollars. You don't need the fucking money. And he pay, he he pitched it as like, oh, I'm going to do some shit. That's like, you know, I'm doing some real shit now. That's like, you know, different from anybody else. And it's my own thing. And Bill Maher was a notorious internet hater and podcast hater. He he very famously doesn't like to have anybody on his show who's like made it on the internet as a celebrity. He doesn't like that. He's he was like anti-internet. There are rants of him back in the day. Super old school. He's never changed any thought like that he's had. Super old school. And so he used to shit on podcasts and hate on podcasts. But now we saw they popped off. He sees how successful Rogan is. And he's like, I want to get in on that shit. Yeah. And so he jumps in Meanwhile, he's still like 900 years late. Exactly. So (laughs) he wants to get in on it. And the fact that there were ads just really irked me because it's like, you don't need the money. I have no doubt he doesn't believe in the fucking products that he's selling. Like, it's the same standard podcast products that they're selling. Yeah. Like, I really just like weird shit. And yeah, anybody who it really annoys me, man. Like, I get people got to pay the bills and shit and they're an entertainer or a commentator or a comedian or whatever. But like, at least only do ads, at least only do ads for shit you actually like, you know, like at least have that bare minimum amount of like credibility and respectability to your shit. But a lot of people don't do that. They do. the. So he had ads that fucking pissed me off. It was really weird. But like, so I watched it. The very first podcast was with William Shatner. William oh. Shatner, the dude from he's Star another, Trek. I don't even know too much about him, but he just seems like another prick. Well, he's like, he's over 90 years old. He's, he was on Star Trek and it was, it. Did Crystal he just saying, go to the moon with uh, Elon Musk? Yes, or, or no, with the or Jeff with Bezos. Jeff Bezos, yeah. So Crystal was saying, it's like, that's the perfect, like that, that's Bill Maher showing his age there. Like he thinks like, oh, it'll be so hip and cool to have William Shatner on. Cause he still thinks of him as like the Star Trek guy from like yeah, 1969 yeah, yeah. or some shit. It's like, dude, he's ancient. Like, <laughs> like, I'm not hating on him. Like, God bless. No fucking but it's person just... under 37 knows who William Shatner is. Yeah. Yeah, true. So, so anyway, I just, so I watched it and man, it was so awkward. Like it's so awkward. So the whole shit, he does his standard stick shit, right? Like. I'm Bill Maher. I have sex and I do drugs and I hate marriage. Like it's just the same shit. Yep. Repackage where he's trying to be more like laid back. Uh, but yeah. He, all the other thing he, he was always talking about. I'm a big partier. I love partying. Oh, uh, can't you tell? I smoke weed. Like it's like, dude, if you tell me one more time that you smoke weed, <laughs> like I, I'm, I, I kind of don't believe you at this point. It's like. <laughs> No, it, that's it, the one thing I don't. Yeah, you're right. It's like he's always got a rub in your face. It's like I wear sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> I wear sneakers. Cool. But yeah, Omar. like it was all like I love to party. I'm such a partier. I have sex. I do drugs. I hate marriage. Like it was all the same rants, just repackaged, trying to be in like a more laid back format. But and it all seemed it seems so forced. Like the whole podcast seems so forced. He seems like he's trying to force looking like the cool guy. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, and that's like, what he did when he was on Rogan. He like. 
there was all these like weird moments where he would like, can I put my feet up on the table? And, so like, weird. It was like a power move or some shit. Weird shit that like no normal human being does. It's like, hey, can I do this ecstasy on the table right here? Is that cool? Like just random <laughs> shit that like no one would ever ask. <laughs> that like he was asking. That I can imagine that like his first episode of his podcast, he tries to like just go like to the top of like the most extreme like guys i'm really cool so i'm just gonna just try and say everything in this first sentence here so if you don't continue listening at least that first sentence you're gonna know that i still gel my hair back i still wear a leather jacket i still am cool i've got an xbox sitting right here across from us i smoke weed and like it's like bill chill out like just just do your podcast and just be a normal person and all that will just come across as you're talking like there's no need for you to like put your feet up because you think it's cool yeah you're you're making all my points like the thing that i that stuck with me is that he strikes me as like he's still stuck in like frat boy mode he's still stuck in like i'm the party guy i'm the cool guy i'm the outsider i'm the but like you're not an outsider bro you've been on hbo since like 1973 dog you've been on tv like your entire adult life yeah like it's not and, but it just it just annoyed me because it seemed ev- all about everything about it seemed so like inauthentic and forced. And I don't I mean, I still watched it. I like sort of hate watched it, but I watched it. I'll probably li- listen to f- a few more of them. But like, yeah, it just. It just rubbed me the wrong. I mean, it's kind of like sad. It too. is kind of sad. And it made me want to be like, can you just leave one fucking thing to to like us? You know what I'm saying? Like, don't try to encroach on the podcast lane. It's like this. This CNN Plus shit. I don't know if you heard of this, but CNN is launching like a streaming platform. Yeah, isn't and Rex Chapman going to be on there? I, I don't know if he is, but... Yeah, he's on every, like one of those shits. Everything I've seen has been like terrifyingly bad. Like Jake Tapper is going to do a book club and Anderson Cooper is going to do a show on like raising kids or some shit. And See, that's the thing we've always said though, is like these people that they have on TV are forced upon us, you know? And it's the same thing with ESPN that I get mad at, like I get mad at. They have these analysts that, like, w- some of them are former athletes. Some are not. They're just random, like, you know, sports columnists. But we're just forced to listen to their takes, and, like, they become popular because they're on national TV. So people, like, our parents or just, like, older people, like, that's the only game in town. So they think they get this false, like, popular, like, ism or whatever the fuck it's called where they think they're actually liked and cared about. When in reality, we're just forced to watch you. So, like, yeah. mm-hmm. it doesn't give you, like, all this, like, that's why, I mean, I kind of look at it as a good thing because now Bill Maher does this and it's come kind of humbling where hopefully people on YouTube can shit on him and he <laughs> sees it directly there. That's where if you listen to this, go <laughs> shit on that. Whereas, like, YouTube, you can't you can't shit on it because it's, like, national TV, you know? Yeah, I, I feel you. I'm with you. But here's the here's the old switcheroo they pull on us, though, because this is definitely what happens. I saw it happen in real time on YouTube with the big media platforms. They rig it. So what happens is this happened with CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News. There was a time back when I first started on YouTube where, and even while I was on YouTube for years, this was still the case. There was no algorithmic support for like CNN, MSNBC, Fox News. Nobody watched their shit because it just wasn't good. And nobody ca- people were going to YouTube to escape the mainstream garbage. Yeah, of course. That's yeah. where they went. But then after a while and a few scandals with some channels that were bad that had some ads run on it and a bunch of negative ads, a bunch of negative articles were written. What happened was YouTube was like, oh, shit, we're being a little too edgy here, a little too controversial. And they like rigged the algorithm so that you can you promote like the prominent corporations, the CNNs, the MSNBCs, the Fox Newses, and then all of a sudden they went from getting like literally a couple hundred views a video, all of a sudden all their shit is now, you know, plenty of things get a million, two million, yeah. even a bad video is like 200,000 or whatever. So there was a time I used to kick their ass. Now I don't kick their ass because I'm suppressed by the algorithm. They're, they're supported by the algorithm. So like, and I think feel like the same shit is going to happen with like Mar and his podcast. And But don't get me, I'm not trying to say he's equal to CNN or MSNBC. Like he's not as bad as them. Like he's got his blind spots. He's got his downsides. He's not nearly as bad as like the super mainstream guys. Yeah. But yeah, you get the sense that like he's he's on HBO and he know he has connections and they're going to find a way to to 
talk to the right people and pull the right strings. And then they're going to find a way to prop his shit up massively and like make it big almost instantaneously. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I don't think it will get as big in the podcast world. Obviously like TV has a different like effect to it. I still think there's something to people finding, you know, like, like little specific talent on YouTube and stuff like that. I do agree that like with like Apple podcasts and those more mainstream, like, um, you know, Spotify things, there's a way for ag- al- algorithms and like top searches to all funnel towards like, you know, main stream names like a Bill Maher, or, you know, uh, Jimmy Kimmel or Conan O'Brien still even has his podcast. But like the one thing that I don't like is that you won't ever see like the ratings for their thing. You know, it's not like Yes, that's TV. the thing about CNN Plus. They're not going to show any fucking ratings for exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. So like they can front to the cows come home that like you know this is the number one rated show on this or that compared to what and also like number one but it's 12 people watching so you know like you can spin anything to make it seem like that shit is popping where you could kind of get to a point where you're intrigued where you're like is that shit really number one you know number one let me have to check this shit out and then like you're pulled in for an episode. There's a person you like and you watch that shit. So like you're drawn to it. And that's something that like these networks have the pull with to your point is they know all the people who run the Apple podcast or Spotify. So like, I mean, these people are always going to have an advantage in some capacity. Bill Maher is always going to have a leg up, but like, it's always fun to have these little communities where we could shit on him and it gets back to him. I'm sure he knows that like, at the younger crowd, nobody fucks with him. And he's got to stick to all his old farts that he'll never, he'll never have a young, cool, like person on his podcast. Yeah. Because William Shatner was him. the first Quentin That's Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino was the second Quentin Tarantino. That's what I'm saying. Like, as good as Quentin Tarantino. Like, I don't even, I don't really know many of Quentin Tarantino movies, but that dude just seems weird as fuck. And like, he seems <laughs> awkward and maybe he's a genius. But him and William Shatner, like William Shatner, I wouldn't pay $17 to have a conversation with this dude because he seems exact like him and Bill Maher is like a, it's like talking to a mirror. They're both seem smug. They both seem pompous. Low key. After watching that podcast, I'm not going to lie. I like Shatner a lot more than I like Maher. Oh, really? Shatner low key pushed back on like, cause he's 91 dog. He doesn't have time to fuck around. So yeah, like he still seems like very like just like uh, William Shatner and your answer doesn't mean anything to me. Mm, nah, I, I that was my impression of him too before I watched the podcast. But uh-huh. like, so to give you an example, when Mar talks about like I'm a big partier, I love partying, and uh, William he Shatner actually say some shit like that. He kept saying dumb. He kept saying shit like that, trying to be like I'm cool. Like look, listen to me. I said I party. I smoke weed. He's he literally to a says ninety one year old. He says, Are, if you're asking me if I had sex in this room, yes, I have. He said that at one point. Like William Shatner was like, I didn't. What I'm talking about stuff. Exactly. No, but <laughs> Shatner actually reacted like that from time to time. William Shatner, when Mar said the partying shit, William Shatner was like, I don't go to parties. <laughs> That's kind of like, gangster. Just like. I fuck with you. <laughs> no, I like I, I did. I sort of liked him after that podcast because he, he kept it real. But Mar was like, oh, I was just forced, dog. It was just forced. It was like him doing his shtick. Oh, well, he's just an awkward human being, and like I think he. Well, so so wait, I'm I'm gonna spill the tea now. But yeah, I know people who know him. Uh huh. Who've met him, right? Uh huh. And the one of the extra reasons why the the shit that the, his <laughs> podcast sort of was annoying and rubbing me the wrong way is that. From a very good source, in real life, he's he's awkward as fuck. He's nothing like he's trying to portray himself as. Yeah. I know somebody who's at a fucking party with him and he didn't talk to anybody. He sat in the corner the whole fucking time, which Loki, look, I respect that. That's what I do when I go to a party. But then don't go out there and pretend like you're fucking Mr. I love partying. Be honest yeah. about this. Sh- you know? Yeah. That, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I but I could see that in him as like he doesn't strike me as someone who's like personable where he can like own a room and walk around that shit and be like, Hey, what's up, Bill? How you doing? Thanks for coming out. You know, like, yeah, you know, well he could own a room doing his stand up cause that's what he does and he's good at it. But you're right in a party situation, talking to people one-on-one like, nah, no way. Yeah. I mean, he's just, I, I've, I, I'd never, I think I liked him 
just back in the day, just because like you'd put me on, like like you were because I loved him. I loved yeah, him. like you were a fan, yeah. and mm-hmm. like I just like I would like watch his show and try to get educated on shit. But now like that, like I have you as a resource and just like other ways to like find shit out. I watch him and just the way he like doesn't you know like change his mind on anything and like that's one thing about rogan is like he can listen and like at least make it sound like he can maybe change a thought of his more it's like when when someone's talking to him there's nothing in his mind that's like i'm gonna maybe listen to what you're saying and then either agree with you or like if i don't agree with you be like yeah that makes sense but here's why maybe like it's just like i've thought of this way since 1970 and this is how i still think about this so that's what it is yeah no you got you got to be open to changing your mind on shit i mean it happened to me in real time a number of times like it happened to me on the whole uh russia ukraine shit at first i always thought it was like all about nato and nato's expansion to russia's border and like that's why you know russia's taken that what i thought was a totally defensive posture but the when i listened to vladimir putin's speech when he like announced the invasion he didn't just talk about NATO. He talked about like six different things. And he was like, these are the like, these are the reasons why I'm doing it. And a bunch of the reasons were like, Ukraine used to be part of the Soviet Union. We built them up. We supported them. They're in debt to us. They turned their back on us and they went with the West. And so now we're going to sort of take back what's ours. And it's like, that's got nothing to do with NATO, dog. That's got to do with like you having imperial ambitions and wanted to take back territory. And that's some shit that I, you know, I learned more in real time and I shifted my, cause you have to, you can't just like the, the thing I can't stand is what I call narrative humpers, people who they have their narrative and they always go back to it no matter what. Yeah. It reminds me of, you know, like you see a little kid, like a toddler, not a toddler, even younger than that infant or whatever, playing with those, you know, those toys where it's like, there's a circle here and you have a circle block and you got to put the circle in yeah. there and there's a square here and you got to put the square in there. Narrative humpers are the people who like see the circle shit and they take like the diamond shaped one and they're like, oh, uh, yeah, why is it not going in? They just keep hammering it and trying to hit it in there. And like the crazy thing is there is an audience for that. There are plenty of people who love narrative humpers. They just want to be told what they already believe. And they want that to be repeated a thousand times over. Like it's a religion, like they're in a religion and like it's a mantra and like th- that's what they want. But they're also, you know, I have no interest in in you know, creating a following that are narrative humpers. I want people who are independent thinkers, who are intelligent, who are willing to go issue for issue, who are willing to be open-minded and are willing to welcome in new information and adjust on the fly. And like, that's something that's always pissed me off, dog. The narrative humpers annoy the shit out of me because it's just dishonest. It's disingenuous and it's boring and stale. Like why you say you're saying the same shit now, thousand times over, like the same position, even when the facts no longer align, align with that position. It's just, it's stupid. Yeah, I mean it's some it's some like WWF shit where it's just like it's a it's someone being a character and, and not a, a normal human being. But I had a question. Do you think Bill Maher is doing the podcast because he like like what do you think the purpose of his podcast is? Because I kind of think it's his way of just using an opportunity to kind of go through his Rolodex and like kind of just pat himself on the back even more and like invite people to his house and kind of just show off who he's friends with as like a new outlet of like i've had them on my show before and maybe that was booked by a booker but now they're actually a personal friend of mine yeah, well yes i so i think you're right because that's the vibe i got from the shatner one and like um like he I, I wants to see how much he, he wants to be able to be like i can get jay-z to my house type of thing yeah i think he's a success chaser that's what i think yeah i think that's what it's all about i think he prides himself on the fact that you know he's probably got like the longest running political talk show on tv with, between politically incorrect and real time with bill maher I think he prides himself on that shit. I think even though he postures like I'm an outsider and I'm against the club, I think he's massively wants to be in the club, sort of like Trump. Trump's like that, too. Like he might shit on Hollywood and shit on elites. But like you want to be that like you want to be in that club more than anybody else. I think Mars the same way. He wants to be in the club more than anybody else. He had a moment in the podcast with William Shatner where he talks about how he loves Jeff Bezos. It's like the fucking exploitative billionaire dude whose drivers have to shit in bags and piss in their in their trucks because they don't get adequate time off. And there are people passing out at the warehouses that don't have adequate, like heating it. That guy, that's the guy you like, Mr. I'm a pretend lefty. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on. That's so, yeah, why I think it's success. It's success chasing. He sees Rogan success. He's like, I want that shit. Now he's yep. chasing that too. Yep. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And that's why, that's why I started to not like Mar. And that's why I started to not like Ellen DeGeneres. I mean, like I, I enjoyed oh, yeah, watching Ellen her show because yeah. it was like, 
to what I always say. It was like colorful and they would do fun shit and they would just like something to watch like midday that was kind of live. But I think she was just doing it to be like, oh, I can have Jennifer Aniston on tomorrow because I'm Ellen DeGeneres. And it kind of got to a point where it was like, you're giving away $100,000, which is why people like you. But you're kind of just doing it so you can just be like, I'm standing here with Tom Cruise to give away $200,000. And it was like, it seems so heartless. But in reality, like she's giving away $200,000 to like a teacher in need or some shit. But she's just doing it because she wants that like to feel good for herself, you know? Yeah, she. I think she was notoriously shitty to her staff too, right? Didn't that come yeah, out? There, yeah, yeah. Some came out that like she, yeah, she wasn't nice to her staff or didn't know their names or some shit. Like, dog, that is the biggest giveaway. That's yeah. the biggest giveaway. If somebody's not nice to people at their job or whatever, the people who are nominally like below them on the ladder, if they're an ass, like that's the biggest. You're telling on yourself so hard if you're like that. Just like people who don't tip or they tip really shitty, like, you're telling on yourself, man. Like, yeah. those are the huge giveaways of, like, flaws in character, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I, I so Ellen, I'm happy her show's over. Hopefully Bill Maher's shit Oh, I didn't even know it was her. over. Yeah, I think it was, like, her last, or it might be, When was her last like, one? I don't know if the last show happened yet, but, like, it, it's her last season because she said, oh, like, she's not okay. doing it anymore because I, people might have said I had conspiracies back when I was saying she doesn't look like she really enjoys doing this shit anymore. But like three years ago, she looked like she stopped enjoying doing this shit. Mm. And I was like, I could tell she's just doing this shit to either do it. And then like she had two more seasons. Where she was just like, I'm in this position of power where I can get like all these top celebrities to come on my show because I can say they're my friends and shit. But she didn't really like doing it. And then now she was just like, I'm going to stop doing this shit. So kind of <clears throat> fuck Ellen DeGeneres. Bill Maher's in the same boat where like I think. I, I mean. He's going to do it for a couple seasons because he's going to have that same Ellen effect where he's going to be like, I got to get Barack Obama on this because I'm Bill Maher and Barack Obama has to come on my show. You know, like, so there's going to be three or four seasons of him just like chasing his friends to your point, just like going after that fame. Um, And it's a, it's, it's a tough thing because the reason Tom Brady came back to football was I don't think he really loves football anymore. Really? He just loves the fame, dog. I mean, like, mm. the, you can't replicate being an active NFL quarterback and getting all the media and mm. interviews after the game and fans chanting your name. Like, once you leave that, man, no one gives a fuck about you anymore. Like, mm. I don't care who you are. You know, like, you still have that aura. Look at, like, like Michael Jordan's Michael Jordan. If I saw Michael Jordan, a panty drop. Like, it's over. Like... <laughs> But it's not the same Michael Jordan that walks into an arena that's throwing on them. Pat yeah, so you're saying lacing them shits up. That high of the performing. That high of the performing, man. So like Bill Maher on HBO getting just like political commentators is not the same thing. And like fame, like like excitement he gets when he can get, you know, the, like an Obama or someone coming, Jeff Bezos coming to his house. Where it's like, I got that, you know? And then people th are going to write an article because he's doing a one-on-one -on -one with this guy. I really think that's the reason Tom Brady came back because it's like he just wasn't able to leave that that fame. This is a, is a drug that's crazy. Hmm. Yeah, that's which, interesting. Which I give Coach K a lot of credit because, like, he's walking away. And granted, he's old. But, like, that that I mean I've never I've been in a basketball arena like coaching but like there's just some like something too I mean you've been on stage at Politicon there's got to be a rush that comes over to you when there's like thousand people out there like looking at you wanting you and you know like it's there's got to be something right that you're like this is this is cool yeah um I mean it, I guess it depends like I'm I'm a very introverted person so mm -hmm. it doesn't you know I, I I feel more comfortable talking in front of a room of a couple hundred people than I feel talking to one random person. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like I feel mm -hmm. more at home giving a speech to hundreds or thousands of people more than just talking to an individual. But yeah, you definitely, you definitely get a rush off of it. But to your point, I think um, with Ellen in particular, I, I agree that she probably was miserable doing it. Any again, anything that smells of deep authenticity, uh, inauthenticity, 
I don't know how anybody can enjoy it mm-hmm. sincerely because it's all it's all image management. You know, it's all like, how do I project this image, which isn't a real image, yep. it's a fake image, and how do I keep up the charade? And how yep. do, you know, and if you're stuck in that cycle, at some point there any potential enjoyment that's there has to totally go away because it's like, what are you even doing at that point? What are you wasting your time doing? Yep. Like, why are you even doing this? Are you just trying to get cheap applause? Are you trying to, like you said, be, I'm friends with Bradley Cooper. Like, what's the point? Like, why, why are you doing it? And so it's very hollow at the end of the day. But yeah, I think the sports one is different, though, because the sports one, like you said, you get a, you get you have to get a rush from that genuine achievement and from, you know, performing at your peak in front of thousands of people and, you know, hearing the adoration of the crowd and nailing it with your craft. So I do think, I think that's, I think there's something more wholesome about the sports one it the public speaking and stuff like that it can come with a similar rush and happiness but again it has to come from a place of authenticity and it can't come from a place of image management and inauthenticity and that's i think that's the hallmark of you know somebody like ellen or even unfortunately at this point i don't think bill maher is nearly as bad as ellen but i think it's he's gonna get there he's he's not in it for the right reason i don't think he's in it for the right reasons i think it's success chasing i think he saw rogan was jealous of rogan wanted to get a piece of that you know, the new market and he wants to talk so about adjusting. having sex in his basement that people are sitting in. It was so aw- and he said it early in the podcast, too. It was like he definitely had on like his like little notepad was like, talk about sex in this room at the beginning of podcasts. Yeah, like he's dre- like the, I'm a bachelor, I'm a bachelor type thing. It's like. Oh. He's a, yeah, he's always been a weird dude. And like he just. When he did that first Rogan podcast, I was like, this is weird, man. Like, putting your feet up. Like, it was like, it wasn't, like, someone could do that, and I could be like, damn, that was kind of, you know, like, okay. Yeah, Rogan felt he, that way, too. Rogan felt it was weird, too. Super, it was just super weird. But, like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I we'll never know if it's tanking or not doing well or any of his shit, but, like, it kind of makes me go back to thinking when I listen to um, the Conan O'Brien's like podcast. I don't know how I stumbled upon it, whether it was like through advertisements or like I saw somewhere. I don't know. But I listened and I felt like it was kind of OK. And then I just kind of stopped listening to it. And I don't know what drew me to the podcast. Like if it was something that like the algorithm kept mm. showing it or something. Probably. But like. That's that's how they get their clicks is, you know, like by just keep force feeding you or showing you little ads here and yeah. there, or like mm-hmm. a little commercial YouTube, or you buy you, something. YouTube's gotten so bad, man. I mean, like. There's got to be some sort of issue with the way shit is working. I used to never lose a single subscriber ever. Mm-hmm. Now, like I'll on the back end of YouTube, I'll see the number and then you refresh it. And it says like down to 200 or 300. You refresh it again. It says down like 471. You refresh it again. It's like plus two. It's like the huge swings up it's and down, but it always fuck. stays in the same realm for me. It's like, it's, it's just aw- something's off with it. Like there's yeah. just something wrong. I used to, exponential growth used to be nothing. Now oh it's yeah, just you like, were blowing everyone. Like, but that's the thing about YouTube is like YouTube, sad to say it is the new CNN is the new MSNBC, you know? So it's like, it's unfortunate, but they're the new mainstream TV network. So it's like, yeah. they're going to cater to all those people who aren't like, they're going to do that same blueprint there. It's true. And try yeah. and force out all of the, like, just non like, yeah, like mind thinking people who like to speak for themselves. They want to be safe for the advertisers. I think you're probably right. I think that's probably what the goal is behind the scenes and why they push certain things and don't with others. But before I don't want to depress people any further. The other thing I wanted to mention to you, did you see there's a new show? Judge Steve Harvey. Yeah, I said that. Oh, no. Who did I, oh, I said that to Jed. I saw Steve Harvey. This shit's been on for a little bit now. Oh, has it I been on like, for a little bit? This show's happened. Like I saw right a while right. ago. I was scrolling through the channels and it was like, Judge Steve. Har-, and I was like, is that an SNL skit? And then it was like some real shit. And I was like, there's no way, but there is a way. Did that you Steve watch Harvey it? Is n- no, I have not watched it. Okay. I sort of want to watch it. <laughs> nah, I do not want to watch like, Because Steve Harvey is just like, you know what you're going to get. And I always see these like clips from uh, Family Feud. Mm-hmm. 
Steve Harvey needs to just go away. <laughs> Low key though, Steve Harvey. Do you want to talk about cancel culture? He has somehow survived cancel culture because Steve Harvey has some of the craziest fucking views you've ever heard on yeah. like women on gay people, right? Gay uh, people. Like yeah. he said, every fucking sh- atheist, every shitty thing you can think of. He's been like, well, fuck that group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, it just hadn't affected him. He and he had the whole thing. Another. He had the one where he like blew up on his staff member or something like that, like, right? So, and it was on yeah. audio. Mm-hmm. And he's supposed to be like a gospel, like, like God fearing man too. Him and Will Smith should get in a room and just go to town. <laughs> or he should have Will. That should be his first episode is Will Smith and Chris Rock, and let Steve Harvey be the judge. I'd mm-hmm. watch that shit. Yeah. That would be good, wouldn't it? I'd watch that too. <laughs> like, I can't. I think he, he no way he has to get a law degree, right? No, and he says that shit in like the in- entrance to the show. He's like, "I don't have no damn law degree." <laughs> like, you're, you're a judge, bro. How do you do that? So I mean, like, there's got to be like that's such a slap called, in the face to like law students. I know it's called arbitration. It's like private arbitration or something is what it's called. I don't oh. know if it's legally binding or not, but like people yeah, can't people be. consent to coming on it for the show. And then I don't know if the shit that he rules is like that's upheld. But yeah, he even says in the intro like, "Now nah, I don't do law, but I'm gonna be a judge." Yo, yeah. See, that's where it's like. What are we doing? What are we doing on TV anymore? Like, what are we drawing any lines? Like, there's got, I sort like, of want to watch it though. The reason why I've, I've, I'm reminded of this and why I want to talk about it is that I got recommended a YouTube video from some guy who was like critiquing the Judge Steve Harvey show, and I and I watched the video and I thought it was funny. And then also I watched another video critiquing Maury. Like you mentioned Maury on the last podcast. Yeah, Doug, I didn't know his show has been the same for decades. Where the whole shit is just like you're not the father. I thought that the shit was like. He mixed it up sometimes. No, he definitely mixed it up. Oh, he, he mixes just, it up? Okay. Yeah, because okay. he did the scared straight thing where those the kids okay. that were like rebels would right, go right, into right. the detention centers or whatnot. Yeah. And then yeah. he would do, yeah, he would do other shit. I feel like, yeah, just random shit like my girlfriend's cheating on me with my stepmother's fourth grandmother's daughter mm-hmm. or some weird shit. Mm-hmm. He'd be like, what the fuck? I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, now he was all over the map with it, but like his... His like his shit shit was like if you tuned in and it was DNA test like you were like yeah this is a banger episode yeah because the thing the that thing I watched butter. the thing I watched on Maury was like he covered two episodes the dude did and it was like both of them were that shit like you know you are the father you're not you're not the father type yeah. shit and I was like oh did they do this for every episode I thought they may have done it for every episode so they did them for a majority and then I kind of would get tight because now coming back and thinking about it like sometimes they would do like drag queen stuff and they would do like like different shit like that where like someone KKK would come out like, guys trying to get some yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 was that jerry springer or was that maury one that of the probably was jerry springer i don't think yeah, maury like ever went kkk with it but like he'd have people do um like guess some shit and he'd have the crowd do like a sign of like the man or the woman like he had other episodes because when it wasn't a dna one i'd be like come on like, I got one day off from school. I can't even get hit with, like, a DNA episode. You got to hit me with some, like, is my mother half cow or some shit? <laughs> <laughs> is my mother half cow? Oh, fuck. Um, before we wrap it up, the um, – so I wrote down one of the things I wanted to talk about was my laziness, like how lazy I am. You're not. I still don't think you are. No, so I'm not lazy on the things that I like doing. If I like doing it, I'm the least lazy person in the world. Like, if it's yeah. some shit I like doing, I'll dedicate 100% of what I have, and it'll be nonstop, and I'm just a machine, right? Yeah. Like, Will, my friend Will said it best. I have a rigid intolerance against doing things I don't want to do. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that's true. But if I want to do some shit, I'm all in on it, you know? So this is how lazy I am. I got um, I got a notification about, like, this some shit... You just got dropped off at my door. That was like, you know, it was like a, a like a, a bigger size package. And I saw the shit and I was just like, I just put the phone down and I was just like, and I didn't fucking go. Get it. I just left the shit sitting there. And like, like an hour or two later, I thought about it and I was like, I'm not getting that shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I just left it sitting there. And you like, like watch now... somebody come up and steal that shit, and you're just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An hour or two later, I thought about it. I was like, I'm still not gonna get that shit right now. <laughs> I just wasn't in the mood to fucking get that shit. That's kind of on some next level shit. <laughs> I told you, dog. You thought I was playing about my laziness. That's, see, that's real where shit. I'm the opposite. Like, where if I see something get dropped off at my door, like, I'll open the door right there and bring it in. Well, so it depends, right? Like, if I'm waiting for the shit, of course I'll get it. But if it's some shit that's like, I got to bring that in eventually, then I'm like, I'll bring it in eventually. Like, eventually it might be today. It might be tomorrow. Like, but it, it'll it get in some oh. sometime. So what was it? The box was too big? Like, or it was just the more of the, like, I just don't want to open my door and bring that shit in. It was cold as fuck, like super fucking cold outside. Like I'm laying in bed, like I'm sort of comfy. I finally hit like a buttery position where I'm chilling. Oh yeah. If you know, like, but I'm like doing, I'm like doing work researching for the show or whatever, but like, I'm not going to interrupt like, it. Wa- I thought the guy dropped it off and you like walk by the door. No, no, no. I saw a notification on my phone. Oh, okay. So okay. I'm still like I'm st- a solid twenty steps away from that shit. Yeah, yeah. That, I, I I could side with you there. I thought you like walked by your door, saw this shit, and were like, <laughs> "I'm just not gonna, I'm just not gonna bring that in right now." Then I was like, "That's some like kind of OD." No, I agree with you. If you're right by the door and you're already up and about and moving, then you're, yeah, you're sort of obligated to get it. But I, you know, but so how do you feel about the two like delays though? Where I'm like, I'm just, I'm not gonna get that shit right now. Do you, you feel like you that's weren't what, by the door still though, right? Still wasn't by the door. So no, yeah, I, but, I'm but with we're talking you. like four hours, like two hours. Think about it. No, in four hours. Think about it. No, the second no is kind of okay. <laughs> the, the first one I could side with you is like, I'm okay. Yeah, okay. I'll give you that first one of like you're not ready yet. The second one is like that shit's been outside for a while. <laughs> yeah, I kind of can't rock with you on the second one because the second one's a little like. Uh, uh, bring like yeah you've been out there for a for a good amount of time i know dog i know but like when i try to reason with myself the part of me that's stubborn is just like shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> like the devil tells the angel like you're a little bitch you know <laughs> i will give you credit because i've known you for a while and i was not kind of shocked but i was more so like impressed at the amount of stuff that like you were doing with like crystal, like tennis and just doing like doing more shit. Oh, I like doing that shit. Yeah. That yeah. Shit is fun to me. yeah. 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 But totally. that's like, like I like, cause I knew you to play ball and do shit, but like you were doing shit and I was like, okay, tennis is like, that's different type of shit. But then you like popped your leg out <laughs> and put yeah. you out of commission for a hot oh, second. That was so bad. It was and it so puts you back into the, like, I'm not doing shit. <laughs> well, honestly, the funny thing is, after my leg healed, I didn't even hesitate to get back on the tennis court. Like, I would have thought that I would have had that in the back of my mind. Like, I'm going to fuck my shit up again. Yeah. But w- when I knew it was 100% healed, I was like, I'm ready to get back out there on the tennis court, which I'm surprised by. But I genuinely like, like, I'm genuinely enjoying tennis. Like, I like playing it. I'm not good at it, but we like to volley and shit. And uh, we've been watching tennis. Like, too. do you get better at tennis? Um, or is yes. Or just, like, hitting it back and forth? You do get better, but I'm never going to be good. When you start yeah, yeah, something yeah. in your fucking 30s for the first time, you're never going to be good at it unless you dedicate all your time to it, which I'm not going to do. Imagine you fast forward, like, 15 years. You're, like, playing Federer and, like, oh my like God. you're, like, at the Wimbledon. <laughs> oh, my God. That'd be fucking amazing. And, like, um, interview after you won, you're, like, I was just doing a podcast. And <laughs> out of shape as fuck. Didn't even want to get a package at my door. <laughs> Now I just won Wimbledon. <laughs> now I beat Roger Federer. Um, but yeah, like I'm, I've, I've even enjoyed watching tennis. Like low key, tennis has some shit in it where it's dramatic and exciting as fuck the way they do it. Like I've yeah. been watching matches like at like the Miami Open is going on right now, and it, you know I watch Indian Wells and I watch and like when you watch two of the best players going at it, like it'll be dramatic as fuck. Like yeah, some guy had a big comeback victory the other day. This guy Sinner came back. Uh, Yannick Sinner, his name is. This, like, young Italian kid who was, like, I don't know, 19 or 20 or some shit. Mm-hmm. And, like, it was good as fuck. And so, anyway, I'm now a tennis evangelist when it comes to people. <laughs> Seriously, like, not even necessarily. Like, playing is one thing. I recommend everybody play, play volley, whatever, have fun with it. But mm-hmm. watching tennis, like, you'll get into it. You'll yeah, get no, into there's it. some dope matches. It took me for way too long to figure out how the scoring worked, though. It took me fucking forever to figure out oh, how the scoring worked. Oh, I had that shit back in 88, yeah. Oh, I mean, you knew like, about it for a minute? Yeah. I didn't. I, I know I would watch it and like pretend like I knew what, what the oh, number for was. Oh, for real? 
yeah, I didn't know it for a long time. How the how the numbers worked, how the scoring worked. It is weird, and I, like I would be curious to talk to like a tennis like expert to understand how they just came up. Like, why do they jump from so random? Zero to fifteen, fifteen to thirty, thirty to forty. Yeah, I yeah I'm yeah I don't I don't get those shits and some of the tiebreaker stuff I kind of understand, but it's still a little confusing at now, some tie points. Tiebreaker is actually easier. I think it's like first to seven. Oh, is it seven? Because they've had shit go to like they dudes have played overnight. Like there was that one dude Eisner. Or well, that's some just, shit. Well, you have to win by two. Oh, okay. so, so if oh, it goes so forever, that's why. Yeah. Got it. I did yeah. see one clip recently. There was a tall like a. I don't know if he was Hispanic or some shit, but he was serving and someone might've said some shit. Curious. Yeah. 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 And he was like, do I, t- do, are you good at tennis? And the guy was like, no. And then he turned back around and, and Ben Stiller was sitting there and he was like, do I tell him how to act in movies? And Stiller was like, <laughs> <laughs> was that, was he like dark skin dude? A little dark skin. Yeah. 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 So tall, that's curious. Too, yeah. Tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah skinny curios that guy's it was kind of yeah. gangster like it, it, he he looked like he wanted to say something to him the whole match that guy is he's an interesting story because he had a lot of injuries mm-hmm. and he also like almost admittedly doesn't really care that much about being a professional tennis player but, but in terms of nice. his in terms of his raw ability he had all the potential in the world he could have been the tiger woods of tennis yep. like he's just nasty he's so tall and skinny but he's still super fast he's got all the tools but he just he admits like i don't even really care about being number one in the world damn yeah, it's kind of gangster. I mean, like, if he's just doing that shit to do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. No, I enjoy I enjoy watching it, though. Yeah, tennis anyway, is cool. Let's wrap it up. You got anything else for these lovely people? Uh, No, I just ate some banging food that I had the other night. I, I, my stomach's been fucked up. Like, Yeah, you don't even know what caused it, right? You said? I don't know what caused it. I had a cup of coffee, and I put some creamer in it, and, like, ran to the bathroom and straight... Yeah, like was the creamer was the creamer uh, like bad? Did it go bad or something? I don't was it think so? The liquid creamer? Or was it the powdery creamer? The liquid creamer. Yeah, it may have gone bad. It right? might have, but like that was like the start of the race because like that night didn't stop. Oh, couldn't even sleep, and then like then went to dinner with Molly that night and ordered like some ribs, which was like bad move. Like, and the ribs were banging too. Oh I had a man. Couple. And then now I'm finally back to like good, and I have some of the leftover ribs. But oh man, it was bad for a hot second. So I so I I reheated. I had like pizza, ribs, French fries, and it was just like a fucking awesome meal of food just coming all together. Just getting your the stomach back on track by eating the worst possible food. <laughs> <laughs> I cleared my shit out to like ground zero. Like it was Damn, like it was like yeah. that. How it many was, days did it last? It was like a good day and a half of just like. Flush it. Like it was to a point where I'd sit on the toilet and I'll just be like, there, "There's got to be nothing left in my stomach." Like it must have just been an empty hallway in there. It's like it Whoa. was, like my intestines were coming out. Yeah, you said you thought maybe you had COVID again, right? Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I, but if if that's a symptom, then maybe. But like, yeah, it was you, like it cleared up my whole system. When you did have it, tell everybody what it was like when you did have it. I don't even know if we talked about this on the podcast. I, I kind of really only had like one restless night of sleeping. And then the next day might have just had like a gloss over me. Mm-hmm. But nothing bad, like nothing bad. And I'm like, I got both shots and the booster. But then I just saw that Kathy Lee Griffin got like a fourth oh, one. Yeah. Fourth like, shot. Kind of just, oh, D. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, they might make it like every year we get a COVID booster. Yeah, that's like fine. That, like the flu shot or something like that. But yeah, but, four in a very short time frame is crazy. But when you got COVID, you had it after the two shots, right? It was before you. Yeah, it was before you got the booster because it was after. I remember after you texted me about the doctor was like, yeah, you want yeah, the yeah, booster? And you felt one. like you couldn't say no. So you're like, OK. Yeah, you were but I was, me. Still I was like, my, you could, like, I mean, immune. yeah, I was I, I said if I was in your shoes, I, I maybe would have said no, because if you're boosted if you had your first two shots and you had covid you're you're fully immune like you were yeah. good but you got the shot anyway you said you didn't have a terrible reaction to that next shot no. so and yeah the covid wasn't that bad when i had it but like but you were you were vaccinated so that's a good uh, yeah. you know public service announcement for everybody is that you were vaccinated you had covid and you wasn't even that that's bad. why i'm curious i i'm gonna strongly th- say and think that triple h was not vaccinated but i don't i mean 
So what happened? I saw you retired, but why do you retire? I didn't see the specifics of that. Supposedly he like retired from wrestling and then like he did a sit down with Stephen A. Smith and I I didn't watch any of it. I don't know any of the story, so I could be completely wrong. But supposedly he was saying to Stephen A. Smith and it was getting pretty emotional that. Hold on. Oh, that um, he had COVID and he was really having bad chest compressions and pains and stuff like that. And like, again, I don't know. But if I had to guess, if someone asked me, I would say he's unvaccinated. I got to watch that interview because I saw the headline. I didn't watch the video, but I should well, definitely like, watch the video. If he's unvaccinated, then I don't I don't give a shit, really. Because if you're vaccinated, then you won't have all those chest compressions and maybe bad breathing and stuff like that. So, like, I don't I'm not going to give you all those sympathy points now that you're crying for. Yeah, I mean, look, most people. Back, if you get vaccinated, you have over 90% protection from severe illness, hospitalization, and death. And that's the bottom line. So anytime anybody sees, you know, whatever the sort of anti-vax stuff, so. little little anecdotes here and there, it's like, no. Like, here's the main, the main point. There was a French study with millions of people yep. and over 90% protection from severe illness, hospitalization, and death. That's, that's it right there. That's the big one. That's the debate ending part yeah. of the conversation, you know? And like... I do. I'm maybe I'm a little different from you. I do feel bad for him, um, but yeah, I'm probably feel worse if he was vaccinated. And that happened. Yeah, because if you it, took it, all the precautions if, that you wanted, you should have taken, and you still got jacked up by the shit. You know. If I I hope I'm wrong. If someone writes in there that he's vaccinated, then I will maybe actually watch that interview and cut him some slack. I'll watch. I'm gonna watch it. I'll see what's going on with but it. But to be totally fair, I was never really a Triple H guy growing up. Oh yeah, I was never. I he was never, never did a it for Triple me. H guy. I was more, I mean, I did love DX though. I, I was a DX, DX was guy. Cool, yeah. I love, I love Road Dog. I love X Pac. Yeah. By the way, shout out to Sean Waltman. He's the man. He's, uh, he loves watching Secular Talk. Who's Him Sean I, Waltman now? Sean Waltman is X Pac. Oh, yeah. You told me that's like, he's a fan, right? He loves politics. He's into politics. That's what's up. He's a real smart dude. Um, Him and I have actually interacted a bunch of times. He's a real nice guy, man. You he's, gotta like, ask him some like wwf stories man that guy's probably just got some like cool ass stories oh. of like them like just whatever they would do on the road when they would be like out I, for WWF. i sort of i sort of low-key fanboy over him a little bit like he, that's like, like he, legendary that was the he had the ponytail he kind of if i'm not wrong x Pac, he did the x factor that was his big thing i don't know if he wore like a ponytail or just had his hair down normal like long hair that was yeah, down yeah, normal that yeah, but he had the X Factor was his move. Doesn't finishing. he kind of look like um, the dude from Backstreet Boys or um, which Brian? dude? Brian from the Backstreet Black Boys. Hair? I've never, I I don't I've never made that connection before. But I'm like, you I'm know just, who X Pac is. Just look up X Pac. You know you know who he is. Hold on, let me just X Pac P O C P A C P A C. Okay. So look at this. I think he kind of does. This is him. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, hold on here. Backstreet Boys. Uh, this guy a little bit. The guy there. Oh, 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 AJ. AJ don't, from the Backstreet Boys. Don't they kind of look alike? Yeah, AJ, I could see it a little bit. Yeah. They might be the same person. <laughs> <laughs> AJ from the Backstreet Boys, if you're a fan, reach out. We'll, that would be you, amazing. Me, you, and X-Pac will get together. We'll sing Quit Playing Games With My Heart. <laughs> Dude, if you could get those three together and like we could just like talk to them about like Backstreet Boys stories and WWF stories. Oh, and shout out to um, Razor Ramon passed away, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rest in peace. Rest that was peace. a rough one because he was legend. Like him, Mr. Oh, Perfect, Hall, Lex Luger, legendary. Like, Scott Hall was a legend, man. British Bulldog, like those dudes were. Well, like, British oh, Bulldog geez. died way back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like mm-hmm. those WrestleManias at like the Caesar's Palace, and they would have like the like trumpets playing and stuff. That's OG WWF. That like people like people talk about wrestling now and shit and all the other shit, but like throwback with like those cats. 
Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, like Owen Hart, all those cats. Yeah, I mean, that's our childhood, you know? That's our childhood. I loved it through the Attitude Era, too, though. I I mean, that was probably when I watched it the most. It was the Attitude Era, and I thought they were, I mean, it was, I loved it. Yeah. So anyway, shout out, X-Pac. We love you, man. Um, All right, guys, we love you, too. Everybody, have a good one. (laughs) I have thankfully now figured out how to stop the stream, so love you, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace.